Welcome out, ladies and gentlemen, to this RGL.GG Grand Finals matchup of Cat Noises versus the Cowardly Dogs. But we'll be finding out tonight is Cat Noises is currently the number one ranked team, actually giving Banny his only loss ever inside of RGL. But they only held on by a point to get to the first place. The Cowardly Dogs had an exceptional showing last week in the semifinals against Cronge Realm. But can they hold firm and can they give Banny yet another title inside of RGL Prolander? Well, we will be finding that out tonight as we have Team 1 versus Team 2. Cowardly Dogs, Cat Noises, fighting out on a best of three map series. Going to be starting out playing some King of the Hill. We'll go to some payload. And then if needed, if it's tied up there, if it's a, such a good match, we need to go to a third map. We'll be finishing it off on, of course, another payload map. I am Sigafu, and i got a few people next to me tonight. I have Vox Day, who's going to be co-casting with me. And we got Elto, who's been doing exceptional with our Highlander casting all season. And he's going to do some analysis with us in the downtime. And then, of course, got to give it some lovely blinking dolphin behind the scenes, giving us all those lovely, lovely camera shots. And Vox Day, how are you doing out here tonight? I'm doing awesome, man. It's cats versus dogs. I mean, is there more natural rivalry than that <laughs> that we can that we can always see? Uh, it, we, we've got the two best teams going at it in the grand finals here of RGL. Uh, we've got some of the best players to ever play TF2 as well. I mean, I, I don't think you could ask for a better match. It, it really is. I mean, I definitely think this is the most competitive grand finals we've had to date and definitely feels like it's one that can go either way. Uh, Elto, my man, how are you doing out here tonight? I'm doing good, doing good. Haven't been around Prolander too much over the past season or so. You know, again, as you've been saying, focusing more on Highlander. So glad to kind of hop right back in at the end here and, you know, kind of cheat a bit, see the see the conclusion to the season without having to do anything to uh, work up to it. But yeah, no, definitely agree with, uh, what you, with what you guys were saying before with how this feels like such a close final where, you know, a lot of the uh, past finals in Prolander, you know, we've had some pretty good games, but with uh, Froyotech having been in the finals then, it was always kind of a, an underdog story. And while those can be, you know, those can be very entertaining to watch and really rewarding when they come true and, you know, the underdog, the David takes down the Goliath, you know, we hadn't really seen that. So kind of opening it up to allow this more balanced final coming in with some of the bigger names spread out a bit, I think is going to make a really, really hype match. Yeah, absolutely. And, and now we're just hitting a thousand viewers. Thank you for everybody who's joining us out here tonight. Uh, this is Team Fortress 2 Pro Lander. Uh, if you're not familiar with competitive TF2, well, then you are missing out one of the greatest online competitive games. It's so much fun. There's a bunch of different formats that you can play it in. Sixes, Highlander, Pro Lander being the main ones. And if you haven't heard of Pro Lander, if you played a little bit of competitive TF2, Pro Lander is actually a little bit newer. It's about two years old. And the way that it works is it's a 7v7 format. Uh, so it's a little bit smaller than Highlander, but you can only have one of each class. So at any given point, you're going to see a majority of the classes in the game seen play. And that's what kind of makes it fun. But here's the part that makes it interesting is you kind of get a little bit of a mix and matching uh, from your sides about which classes don't you want to run or which classes do you want to run? For instance, we're going to be seeing that here tonight with Cat Noises kind of going over the lineup here. We've got Speedy, who will be playing Scout. Mirror Man on Soldier slash Flex. He'll sometimes mix it up to Pyro as needed. Jarrett on Demo. Carson, who's mostly going to be playing Heavy. Uh, he doesn't tend to mix it up too much. Daffodil on Medic. Spamfest will be mostly Engineer with maybe a little bit of Flexing as well. And then Fallen Lord on Sniper. And to compare that to the Cowardly Dogs, we have Banny on Scout. Dongus on Soldier, Billy Soros, who's mostly going to be playing Pyro, maybe a little bit of flexing, Bull on Demo, Nursey on Medic, Andrew on Sniper, and then Faint, uh, who's stepping in for Demento, probably Spy with a little bit of heavies, tends to be what Cowardly Dog has. But right there, you can already kind of see where Cat Noises doesn't tend to run a Spy, they run more of a heavy and engineer, uh, with maybe a little bit of Pyro tossed in there, whereas the Cowardly Dogs, they do run a Spy, Right, and they tend not to run an engineer almost ever, and then they kind of flex it back and forth between heavy. I mean, Vox, you've been with me here tonight. I mean, is that kind of a good representation of kind of these two teams' play styles? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty solid. It, when looking at cat noises, when you've got a player like Spamfest on your team, you've got to run an engineer. We have seen play after play after play from Spamfest watching these matches where single handedly uh, puts the team on her back to, to just absolutely destroy uh, the opposition. But on the Cowardly Dogs, like I said, Faint. Uh, always always prone to pick up Spy, really strong, but also able to flex out. And then Billy Soros, 
usually will be running pyro as well great protection in the combo for nursey for bowl as well uh so you you've kind of got that dichotomy you've got the two best teams but the flex classes they they like to use are kind of markedly different so we'll it's always fun to see how that's going to pan out whose game plan is going to have to change first Definitely. And so as we are uh, getting ready to be up here, before we kind of talk a little bit more about these teams, let's talk about the maps that we playing tonight. Uh, and so you can see here, uh, if you bring up it, uh, Elta, what maps, uh, what kind of was the band process that we went through tonight and what maps are we going to end up being played? All right, yeah, we started off um, with the uh, normal RGL rotation, and we had Cowardly Dogs banning Steel first off, which was a really good call from them. It was the map that Cat Noises had beat them on in the regular season. And I think getting that out of there, because even though I believe Cat Noises came in as the number one seed, you know, generally whenever that, whenever you see Banny on that team's roster, you're kind of thinking, all right, this team is, you know, coming in at least preseason, you'd think they'd be number one. And I think banning that out is definitely a good option. And then Cat Noises ban product in turn, which is the map that uh, Cowardly Dogs have beaten them on in the season. So you get both of those maps out in the beginning, which I think opens up the series a little bit. Um, Cowardly Dogs pick Cold Plant, which I think is a good pick for them, given, you know, that spy where Cold Plant, you, have so that you can have those quick spy rotations through the lobby, you know, really plays towards Banny and Bowl getting really in there with the flank and uh, demo spam over those, uh, over the houses. Uh, Cat Noises came in with the upward pick. I think, again, when you have, when you have some player like Spamfest on your team coming in and uh, playing Engineer, payload maps and stopwatch are always going to be more of your you know more of your friends so they come in on that and i think it plays more towards their you know style to be a little more coordinated focus on those team plays get that one advantage and roll with it rather than trying to you know maintain like a, a very average high level kind of like the cowardly dogs do uh could have explained that a little better i think but uh coming in with the last ban cowardly dogs ban vigil um again with payload in the rotation you know it's going to be a uh it's going to be favored towards that team that has FanFest on it and vigil being one of the newer maps uh hadn't i believe this is the first time it's been played in prolander correct me first if I'm time, wrong. yes yeah it was a first season so uh i think again when you don't have that kind of set engineer player on cowardly dogs getting rid of that newer map is going to be again in your interests and then uh cat noises came in with borneo which i think they just feel is going to be a strong map for them i know daff is a uh, pretty strong understands that map really well and again anytime you have spam fest I, I keep saying it but like vox said spam fest can be such a game-changing player in ng that you know if you have her on your team you want to lean towards maps where she's going to be able to excel and the lack of an engineer or at least an engineer main on the side of the cowardly dogs is really gonna you know i think shift those maps in their favor yeah i absolutely think so i mean one of the things that's kind of interesting is that Cowardly Dogs, they picked Coal Plant, but when I was kind of talking with both these teams beforehand, just kind of getting a feel of what's going on, uh, Daffodil actually mentioned that in Daffodil's part of the Cat Noises, is that Cat Noises was actually planning on first picking Coal Plant. And so I'm very curious to see how that's going to go down. Is like they're like, okay, we really trust in that. And one of the reasons is, is that a coal plant for anybody who's not familiar, it's a, a map where the the midpoint is flat. If you're not you know familiar with comp, you probably haven't seen it before. And then there's these two shutters that face right onto it. And so what's really common is where you'll put your engineer inside of the shutter, and then they'll just kind of open the door and kind of shoot onto the point, then drop back, and then let the shutter close to kind of protect the gun. You're it's giving one of the me flashbacks. Sig. You're yeah. giving me flashbacks. <laughs> There is, um, and so this is, uh, what's it called? And, and so essentially, yeah, it's definitely like you lost the game, right? It was like three, three overtime rounds in a row, essentially, where your team like got wrecked on the middle point, like over and over again. And it was spam fest to just stepping up again. I don't know if we're going to see that. I, I hope, you know, the coward, the dogs are going to be a little bit more prepared for that. They also are going to be having faint, you know, spy, hopefully can get a little bit more, you know, saps onto the gun. Uh, but then again, it's like one of those things where it's like w one of these questions of like, how do you play this? If you send your spy to the gun, he's probably going to die in the process. So is that a valuable enough pick versus going for the sniper, which sniper inside of pretty much any format is the pretty much the first or second best pick you can get. The medic obviously almost always being the best pick you can get because, you know, giving yourself that heal advantage, giving yourself that uber advantage uh, tends to work itself out. Um, yeah. I think it's interesting too, as you mentioned, that uh, that coal plant was going to be the first pick for uh, for cat noises because just kind of taking a look at the pick bands, 
I I kind of I kind of look at Cowardly Dogs as a stronger roster, but Cat Noise has definitely came out on top with the pick bands. Like this is a very favorable map pool for them, even if slightly in terms of DM because you've got players like Banny and Andrew on Sniper, uh, you might be at a bit of a disadvantage in that sense. This is kind of best case scenario for Cat Noises to pull this one off. I, I really do think so, and so I'll be curious to see uh, what they're able to do. We do have. 14 live in server so hopefully it'll be going up here uh, very soon as we get in this it's going to be a best of five on this map um and you know i'm kind of curious you know i want to pull up some logs uh, around from the last time so these teams they played twice during the regular season and i you know kind of point up the logs here from the uh viaduct game and kind of looking through those you know one of the things that really stands out to me is uh and one thing that they're really going to have to deal with is which is not a surprising thing is andrew top fragging like fallen lord is an amazing player uh but he was struggling that game on viaduct i'm kind of curious if it's going to be any better i don't know elto do you kind of see anything in the logs that you know kind of speak to what we might see tonight in this game um i i guess i'm kind of dodging the question not on the logs but just thinking back to highlander where andrew was playing in the beginning of the season in highlander before his team died but Fallen's Highlander season was phenomenal, and I mean, I it's my thought that I think he was the MVP of that season, and he only got better as the season went on, where, you know, in the beginning, he wasn't having as, you know, some games might have been a little more tepid or lukewarm, but towards the end of the season, he started pulling monster games out on a consistent basis, and I think that maybe I'm, I'm giving a recency bias towards him here. So I think while we while we definitely saw Andrew, you know, really coming out ahead in these matches that were played, you know, earlier in the season, I think as time's going on, Andrew hasn't been playing as much. Fallen's been playing more and dominating. So I would be looking for Fallen to really kind of make a comeback in, you know, in that sense and take it a little bit more evenly to Andrew here, if not kind of surpassing him just again due to that fact that you've got him playing a lot more. Andrew, again, hasn't been playing too much outside of Prolander. Whereas, you know, Fallen's had the benefit of both. And again, I've just been so impressed with his performance that I've seen. It'd be it'd be hard for me to believe that he's going to be getting, you know, shut down to the point that he was earlier. Yeah, I'm kind of curious myself. I mean, Vox, what, who are kind of some of, the, some of the other players that we should be looking out for uh, on this first map? Well, you know, just depending on the kind of viewers that we've got in there right now, they may not be aware of the Banny. Uh, he is arguably, I think, depending on, on who you talk to, everyone, almost anyone will agree, the best high, uh, TF2 player uh, to, to grace this game. So you've got him playing Scout on this side of the Cowardly Dog. So he's going to be a player to watch for the in duration of the entire game. Also, Nursey, his medic, uh, the best medic, in my opinion, to play the game. Over on the other side, Carson, Spamfest, great players to watch, but we are getting into it. And here we're coming out to this first mid fight. It's going to be the Cowardly Dogs of Bull reaching the midpoint first, coming through that shutter side. As it looks like Jared's going to take a little bit slower as he's meeting up with his team. Here comes in Mirror Man doing some good damage as Dongus is going to contest him over on the roof. Now they're inside really taking it, but here comes in Banny going straight onto the Sniper Fallen Lord, but he's able to dodge it and keep himself alive as Mirror Man picks up Andrew on the other side. But Banny now onto Daffodil. Can he get the Snipe? No, he's actually going for Fallen Lord. Doesn't get the kill, and now uh, they have the Sniper advantage, but with only three players alive forward. Uh, it looks like, I don't know, this is kind of a back and forth point. I don't know who's going to come out on top. Yeah, very chaotic mid. Both teams getting a couple of picks. Right now, uh, the respawns are coming in, so who's going to get in faster? Point c control is better for cat noises, as right now sticking them out is Jarrett over on the ramp, but the Uber gets used by Nursey right now. No return yet from Daffodil, and there it goes. So much better Uber on the red side. Uh, Cowardly Dogs just need to back out. Point is getting capped up, but Andrew with a nice shot onto Daffodil as Carson and Merriman pick up two more, but that's the parting shot. Andrew already getting hot, taking out Daffodil. Yeah, really nice job there early on, and that's going to give a sizable advantage as Daffodil also onto the long respawn. For anybody who's not familiar, when your team controls the point, your respawns are twice as long as the enemy team. And so Daffodil just getting back up, but that doesn't matter as Andrew taking off his head again. Here comes in the bomb onto the enemy team, but uh, the Nursey wasn't even committed out onto the point, and so this is going to be a free point for the Cowardly Dogs. They're not even going to need to use, well, they don't even have Uber yet, uh, but they're going to be able to walk onto this, but they're a little bit safe here. They don't know where Fallen Lord is, I guess, and uh, fine, they will come down with it, but a solid uh, start here for Cat Noises, despite losing the Medic, up about 40 seconds. 
Yeah, uh, this is this is awesome for the cowardly dogs. I think you're pretty happy with how that retake went out. The fact that you didn't have to use and just Andrew stepping up in clutch moments. But there goes Mirror Man over the top and also a jump from Jarrett. Unfortunately, nothing coming from that little sack wave there. Uh, Speedy does find Donkus just kind of jumping onto the roof, but uh, nothing too major uh, right now. Just kind of looking for their spot into it. But with Banny going down, this might prompt at least trying to force that Uber out of Nursey. Just kind of bait the point enough, but you want to keep Daffodil alive the entire oh. time. Going in for a bomb. Nice try. They get the Uber out, and this is fine. You just need to back up now, and you can push the point with full advantage. Yeah, that was a great job by Billy Soros doing some good reflex, and that's the benefit. You can see that the Cowardly Dogs on blue, they run a pyro, whereas Cat Noises doesn't. So anytime a bomb comes in onto the onto the combo of Nursey, well, they have Billy Soros to be able to reflect it, and there's very few people better in the game than Billy Soros. He just does such a good job at it. But right now, with 100% ready to go here is Cat Noises, and we'll see if they want to walk into it. Andrew he does have a sight line onto Daffodil if he peeks it. And it looks like he's just opting to play it safe. They're not using it. Banny's going to go on to Fallen Lord. Does pick up the frag as they get into the first pause of the night. Yeah, and I'm actually already a little bit nervous for this Uber, actually. So Speedy's down. Merman's down. Uh, you know, going to be respawning shortly, I'm sure. And, and Fallen, too. But the fact that you don't have your scout to bring in on this Uber and your soldier is going to be kind of delayed, they're going to have to take a pretty disadvantageous fight. Uh, of course, we'll we'll see what happens, and maybe I'm a prophet, or maybe I'm just a lunatic. But uh, I'm I'm kind of expecting if they do push with this super right there, cowardly dogs have a really good chance to come out on top. Yeah, I mean, when you're gonna push an Uber right now, you have your demo and heavy forward, as you said, and with Billy Soros up, like what can you do, right? Your heavy can't get forward ground quickly. Like the only chance you have is if you absolutely annihilate the pyro, and then. Even then, it's going to be like basically a solo demo man Uber onto the enemy team. Uh, you're really probably not going to get too much. I mean, you kind of really do need to wait for your teammates to get up and then maybe just do an Uber exchange or, or something close to that. But right now, you can see that where's where's the flank of, of the Cowardly Dogs? And currently, they are sitting on, Banny is sitting on the bats above Daffodil and Jarrett, and then Dong is on the other side. So basically, the flank... It's not really a flank. They're just like infiltrators. <laughs> like they're just going behind the enemy team. And, and that's kind of like what this map does inspire. Like you have to have a, you have to be good at winning those 1v1s uh, when the enemy team comes to your side. Cause that's honestly how you win the game or you counter flank just as hard as you do. And, and that's kind of the, the challenge with this map is you consistently have people on the other side. We get in a countdown, but that's fake. This is just a pause. I'll see if I can find out what it is, but um, Elto, my boy, you've been in here just for a few minutes now. Any kind of uh, anything, any kind of thing that you're seeing so far? I guess just to kind of follow up on what you guys had been saying, I think on that very first mid fight, we saw that gun that you mentioned with Spamfest just setting up a level one, not even a mini, in that shutter. As we actually do get on pause right now, that was doing a lot of work. And Billy on Pyro, we saw. I don't think a single projectile that went in on a bomb has actually, you know, not been reflected yet. And Cold Plant's a great map for Pyro, and if he's able to keep that up, I think Cowardly Dogs are gonna have a really good shot at taking this map. Nursey now coming up to 100%, but oh, oh no, the drop! The trap coming out of Bull! They didn't see, he's been setting it up all game, and now Daffodil had 100%, goes down to zero, and now the Cowardly Dogs, they're pretty much everybody alive. They only lost to Pyro in that fight, and yeah, Spamfest Delph does has his gun in the shutter there, but that doesn't really do much unless you're engaging on the point and oh, what a play out of bowl there. Yeah, that is really rough. If your cat noises, this was your leg back into the round and bowl just coming up clutch those stickies. You can see him putting them down yet again. And he knows that they they're just ultimately successful. Andrew getting shot onto Fallen Lord as a couple players traded out on either side. Nothing too crazy. Both snipers down, which is kind of important here for Cat Noises if they want to get onto the point. Nursey is at 100% and they do use on Bull and Banny. Banny just charging in. He gets one frag. Bull with another. Uh, just kind of trading back and forth. But that gun finally goes down from Spamfest. It's been there annoying the entire time. And it looks like Cowardly Dogs want to take some forward ground with it. Taking out Fallen after the respawn. They're looking really, really good right now and should take this round. 
Yeah, this is looking very good for them. But Daffodil does have a 60% advantage. This is where the pause happened. Um, so it looks like they are going to be able to keep themselves up here. Dongus is also hiding. Look at Demento right now. He's underneath the enemy team's bats, and nobody's even spotted him. Here goes for the rev up. He's going to get some damage, but the overcharge is going to get off in time. They do drop one of Carson onto the point, who I believe got some damage onto the Sticky Trap. Spamfest also onto mini sentries now off of level 3 guns, which I think is going to help out his team for pushing, but that Uber was used so early aggressively, and it was because because Andrew uh, scared him away. Uh, they had a pop to get onto this point, and now they're at a severe uber disad. Yeah, it's pretty rough, especially because they got a, got a hold for two minutes. Uh, right now, zero's on the clock for Cowardly Dog, so as soon as this point gets capped, uh, it's over. So they really are in sudden death time at the moment. Banny goes down, which is good pick, but on to Daffodil comes Dongus. Can't finish off the, the kill, but this should be it as the uber comes out. Daffodil falls, a couple members down on the side of Cat Noises, but actually getting traded out. Nursey and Andrew fall into Mirror Man, finding a couple of picks back in the favor of Cat Noises, and that is just individual skill right there. Uh, really great play from Cat Noises. They hold on to the point. Daffodil just getting up, though, uh, means that they're not going to have an uber advantage to talk of. Yeah, it just didn't quite work out for them. And, and one of the things that they lost in that fight is Banny went down before the push came off. And so I think that kind of hurt them. Dong is jumping in, but again, no pyro here for Cat Noises. And so uh, he's getting a decent amount of damage onto enemy team. Right now, Cat Noises is pretty weak, but Bolt does go down. So no demo man here. Here comes in Dong is getting a lot of damage on his Speedy, but Speedy, beautiful job, but he eats a headshot in the process. Andrew is being jumped by Mirror Man, who's going to get out here. A lot of capture time going in the favor of Cowardly Dogs. Yeah, I mean, Andrew's just so good. Finds a couple of picks, but actually, Jarrett, uh, li a lot of space being created by some members of Cat Noises. Jarrett cleaning up the kills, but as three members oh. of Cowardly Dogs jump on, you just can't finish it off. And that's just good job uh, from Cowardly Dogs reading the situation, knowing that they were down on numbers and just doing it with sheer force of will. Yeah, they did a good job there. They actually switched off to Kritzkrieg at the end, and... If they got it off in time, maybe they would have had a chance. Gonna, it's going to be 1-0 in the favor of the Cowardly Dogs in this best of five uh, series on this map as Jarek gets taken out very early on with a headshot and then a body shot, I believe, from Andrew. But right now, Speedy and Mirror Man both going behind the scenes, but they're going to run into the flank of the Cowardly Dogs and going down incredibly low. And it looks like the Cowardly Dogs are going to come out on the top in this midpoint, but are they? Spamfest again, that level one Sentry Gun finally doing some work for his team, but... Yeah, it looks like they're just losing too many, and finally the Cowardly Dogs will come down with this midpoint. Yeah, just bleeding numbers, and again, Andrew finding a finding pick. I, I don't want to keep speaking his name, but, you know, we brought him up during the uh, uh, during the pregame. Knew, knew that Fallen Lord was going to have to step up big to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Andrew, and Fallen is 100% capable. Uh, but Sniper is, is just one of those mental classes where yeah, when you're hot, you're hot, and when you're cold, it can really affect your game, kind of like a kicker in football. Uh, but Dongus does take down Fallen, which, again, will give some advantage over to Cowardly Dogs, make it more difficult for Cat Noises to find some picks as they want to get off to the point. Uh, but Cowardly Dogs just holding strong right now as Cat Noises just throw, throw balls at a wall trying to get this to work. And Nursey, look at this. Because the pyro is right next to her, she's not popping at all. She's not scared. And finally, the Uber's going to come off, but it's already down for Cat Noises. What a terrible exchange coming out. Now, Speedy's going to be running into Banny in this 2v1. Mirror Man's going to be down there to help it, but can Daffodil get out alive? Can they get it? Nursey does go down as well as Banny. What a cleanup crew from underneath. They turned that into a 3v2. Come out on top. Mirror Man's going to get another one. And I'm just looking at the logs from the first round. Surprising top fragger tied with Andrew. Demento on heavy, 11 frags tied with Andrew. So Demento, sneaky, uh, sneaky player, as uh, Cat Noises does come down with the point. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty surprising. Demento, usually a really, really good spy. Uh, looks like he can pick up heavy with no issues as well. Two picks going in the favor of uh, Cowardly Dogs. So this might prompt the the push out of them. They, I mean, they have numbers. They should just be able to walk onto the point. But they also do know that they're at an uber disadvantage and maybe kind of afraid for for that proposition so we'll see when cat noise decide to use this is actually right away the uber goes in can they find nursey she's down low and she does go down jared finds a couple of sticks underneath her feet so point is retained and uh the threat for now is uh staved off night nice shot by fallen lord picking off bull aggressing onto the point 
Great jobs by Speedy as well. He went he went through the team and he went around, took down Andrew, which is a key pick. I mean, obviously, again, we talked about snipers is probably the second best pick you can get inside this game. And once they had the advantage, let's just take out the sniper, force him to respawn, and just give us that much more comfortableness. So here we go as Cat Noises is going to be coming out on top right now in terms of time in this round. But as we've seen in the last round, that doesn't really mean much. But the Cowardly Dogs are rolling out to the point 40% advantage. But looks like Cowardly Dogs wants to take a fight before they even get to that point. Mirman getting all of his rockets reflected against him as he's going to be an early frag out as it looks like the Cowardly Dogs aggressing across the point. Yeah, they, they do want to get onto this point. So far being held back, which is good, and they got another Uber to use. Demento and Bowl are down and left to retreat back into the lobby are the remainder of players on the Cowardly Dogs. Nursey did live, and this is an important fact, as she's at 90%, but she wants to come out without her demo alive. I guess maybe if you want to just use right onto Fanny, but this is a really scary position to be in. Uh, right now, Mirrorman does jump in, and that Uber gets up forced off early, so it might not be as impactful as it could have been if you kind of all just flooded out at the same moment. Uh, there's a spy behind, though. Uh, it looks like Demento is switched off, and we'll see if that comes into play. Yeah, Demento does get a stab and sap onto the gun. I shouldn't say stab because he ended up using his pistol, but so many players down here for the Cowardly Dogs, including Nursey, who went down to Mirman. Uh, and so it just wasn't enough. Demento might pick up another one onto Fallen. He does get the Butter Knife onto him. That's a big pick. And now here comes in another one. Dongus taking down the Medic and Banny taking down the Heavy. And so what seemed to be like a solid hold, 20 seconds left in the clock, but they are going to lose it here. Nice reef take from the Cowardly Dogs just through sheer will of force. <laughs> this is this is just looking uh, looking like it's gonna get a lot more interesting after that first round I was a little nervous sometimes you know you can see these maps kind of just fall very one-sided cat noises have looked very strong and although uh, cowardly dogs come down with this point I think they they have the stuff they're kind of feeling that momentum look at that they're dry pushing in right now they're not playing scared at all and they might even grab the point off of it good picks coming in for them Dongus is jumping in might find daffodil does not however and the point goes back so 15 seconds remain ubers are relatively even but this means cowardly dogs is going to have to push right on the back foot they cannot create an advantage as they try to cap this and this is going to be hard with that level one sentry gun on the up but here comes in the stab and step there you go the gun is down here comes up the cowardly dogs but the overcharge is being used there's isn't there and they're not onto the point oh what a catastrophe they had a chance but they're searching for frags, and just one of them misstepped off the point for a moment, and the Cowardly Dogs lose a round, tying it up 1-1, Cat Noises does. I, uh, I'm getting more and more excited. I came in hype, and these teams are really showing up right now. Uh, we do have the next mid going into play. Not too much damage traded out. Actually, as I say that, Mirror Man, two huge picks. Actually, he gets a third. Andrew, Nursey, Bull, all down. This mid has to go in their favor. There's no way they can botch us. Banny is alive, trying to do what he can. He's going to go down, and it's just Billy Soros left. It's just a dominant mid out of Mirror Man. And here's the thing is that Billy Soros, one of the reasons that that point went so far in the papers for some reason nursey wasn't with billy or billy wasn't with nursey they were disconnected and so that bomb came in and the pyro that is there to reflect it wasn't able to do anything so andrew does get an opening frag here out onto the side demento again onto the spy class trying to work in uh, some frags for his teams uh, but right now 100 percent overcharge but here comes in the bomb in onto daffodil it's gonna get forced off there but it's not the worst in the world as they do keep pretty much everybody alive Benny's gonna maybe try to get aggressive on Mirman in the lower area here. Looks like Benny will get the better of that exchange. Mirman keeping himself alive finally will go down. And so now Nursey sitting on 80%. Looks like they're not gonna wait too long. And big pick from Andrew. Yeah, that's gonna. They don't even need to do anything. They're just gonna walk out onto the point. Yeah, especially to Demento is back on spy. Got a stab on the Fallen earlier. Uh, he's gonna go sap in the gun. Does look like it goes down. He was coming that entire thing to his team behind, just taking a look, saying, okay, their players are over here, they're still in lobby, we can take this point without any pressure. He knew exactly what their uber charge was. That's good. I want to see Demento potentially switch off. He could probably go another life or two. Um, but now that they have point, actually, no, he is back on heavy. So uh, they're, they're going to forego the spy play. And right now, this is Cowardly Dog's chance to get back into this game because the momentum has been very far in Cat Noise's favor. If you can really kind of take the wind out of their sails with a really nice long hold here, with 100% Uber, they might do that. 
Yeah, they do take down Andrew, and actually Mirman almost takes down Banny. Banny's gonna get the better of that exchange, but they're gonna start walking forward. Here comes up the Uber exchange from either side. Nursey's still not popping. Finally, will do it, but it's only about a 20% Uber for the blue side. Dong is jumping in, but he's incredibly low as Demento picks up one underneath. Bowl above the point is going down a little bit low, but not enough to be able to secure any damage. Nobody with right now Jared on the point to be able to do any more damage with him as Mirman getting chipped down by Banny. Banny re-engaging the point, but Cat Noises comes down with it despite losing Jared at the end there. Andrew, nice 2k, taking down the Engineer as well. Yeah, although this point looks like it's gonna go back and oh, maybe it isn't. So Spamfest's gun prevented Banny from jumping onto that point to deny Jarrett. Your scout will probably win a 1v1 against a demo unless the uh, demo gets, you know, a really nice pipe. But because Spamfest's gun was up in lobby, it just prevented Banny from doing anything. The point hasn't been capped though, hasn't gone back into the control of Cowardly Dogs. It's so, it was so, oh. so close, but they just got completely wiped and Cat Noise is going to retain control and just tick, tick, tick that clock down in, in the lead, huge Uber advantage. They, uh, they're in pretty prime real estate right now to, to take this round. And you can tell how frustrated the Cowardly Dogs are getting at the gun. Now we can see, uh, the soldier for the Cowardly Dogs switch off to direct hit, which does more damage, um, to a smaller area, and that's very good against sentry guns. But here comes in the stab onto the sniper. The bomb comes in, gets the force off onto the medic. Mirror man does win the 1v1 against on the other side. Hole is still down. The level 3 sentry gun is up. But uh, Nursey now only at a 30%, I shouldn't say early, is now at a 30% add. Here comes in Banny onto the medic. Demento is right above, but he's not going to be able to help out. No, he's going to get found out there. But uh, this is going to be the Cowardly Dogs. This uh, caused the Cat Noises to back up, and so this is going to be a free point. Is it? Cat Noises is fighting. Yeah, we've got the, the gun again, just, just being a nuisance. They do finally take the point, but it took a lot more because of that level three. And there goes Nursey again. Mirror Man finds two. He is so good right now. I haven't even seen the stats, but right now, Mirror Man is my MVP for, for Cat Noises. Just consistently getting in, doing so much damage. He He's a, he's a really, really strong player and has developed... Uh, a, just developed really well from from when I last played with him. So uh, yeah. always impressed to see uh, to see that. And right now, Daffodil sitting at a 60% Uber advantage. Gongus goes down. Uh, so no soldier here is Bandy getting blasted back by the level three sentry gun. They can't do anything now. Demento on the engineer off of heavy, trying to do what they can do to return in kind of five seconds, but they need to walk down to the point. But is into a death trap. Here comes up the Uber charge. Billy Source gets annihilated early on here, and the rest should as well. Mirror Man coming up, and there you go. Cat Noise is swinging it around. Two rounds straight, take it 2-1, and match point now in the favor of Cat Noises. I want to cut in here real quick, just to say that since we don't get partial round logs, Spamfest is sitting on the least kill participation on her team by a pretty large margin, and yet is still out-damaging Carson on heavy, just due to the amount of harassment that gun in the shutter is putting out. It's not killing anyone, <laughs> but you don't need to. She's, you know, she doesn't have as much damage as the scouts do, obviously, but... Yeah, Nursey going down on this mid actually going to mean that cat noises are lots of kills. Actually, Daffodil staying alive is going to be an Uber at on the side of uh, on the side of cat noises. But yeah, that gun has been doing an, it's it's been a quiet hero this entire game. And with that, we see that cat noises will be walking onto the point. Fallen wants to go out there. He's so scared. He like he wants to walk onto the point. No one's out there. Neither team really wants to commit. It's here we go. Uh, this is a uh, mid fight version two. But now with a 40% add in the favor of Cat Noises, Banny's going to get in an early frag here onto the heavy. Will he pick up another one as he goes underneath? Actually, he's going to find Daffodil. No, he gets taken down there as Dongus gets annihilated just outside of the underneath area. Mirror Man goes in, not for Nursey, but for the Sniper. And that's going to be a good pick because Billy Soros was on top of the Sniper. But no, it's going to be Jarrett cleaning up because Billy was turned around trying to deal with Mirror Man. That allowed Jarrett to come in and just take down Nursey. And that's the unfortunate part about being a pyro is you only have, you only can reflect one person at a time. And so there you go. Cat Noise is coming down with this extended mid fight. Yeah, and, and this is just kind of the falling apart of Cowardly Dogs. This is a team, Nursey is so incredibly good at staying alive and Billy Soros as being part of the combo usually just just exacerbates that and Banny as well really good in protection just really solid dm but nursey is dying over and over and over uh credit to the team play on cat noises and it's just it's the entire game plan is falling apart because of that uh spamfest does find demento as the uber gets used and there there is billy uh, a little bit of protection there helps nursey get out got to be careful if maybe another bomb comes in because mirror man is uh 
is getting the buff but right now there's the uber advantage for cowardly dogs usually i'd say that they're a shoe in but i'm not so sure right now yeah this is a little bit awkward cowardly dogs do have uh, the uber advantage, but can they use anything with this? Demento gets a stab onto the gun, keeps the shutter open so they can take it down. Jared's popped up way into the air. Uber charge is used, but for what reason? No one's anywhere close to this, and so Fanny's gonna run forward. He does get the sniper, and they pick up one onto the point, but Speedy onto it gets Nursey down so incredibly low, down to 18 HP, but no one is there to clean it up. And so, uh, Spamfest, who's using the Frontier Justice, gets a crit onto the, uh, uh, Fanny. And look at this, Carson just using that heavy HP, and no one's even contesting him right now. And actually, is that a quick fix? I think that's a quick fix out of the out of cat noises. Uh, I'm I'm seeing Uber charge on my side. I'm, I'm not crazy, I'm not 100. <laughs> percent you, you might be just a little, little crazy. This game's getting to you. It's it's a drug. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. We got we got 100 percent on their side. Nursery goes down again. Jarrett, I didn't see exactly where the sticks were positioned, but that's a huge pick. She was about 70 percent and. Uh, with the way those Ubers can leapfrog, that's a, that's a pretty big amount to lose. As now in a weird position, Cat Noise is just over committing with that Uber. Uh, maybe getting a little bit too big for their britches. This might mean the, the cap... Come on, Banny. You're not above capping, are you? <laughs> no, he's, he's above capping. He needs the frags. And they will pick up two, actually, him as well as Demento. And they calm down with the point in a reasonable time frame. So not the worst. Uh, not the longest respawn waves that they got put the uh, the people onto, but hey, you get a you get a plus one in your kill feed. That that's worth something. And so here we go. Now cowardly dogs hold on to this point, but with a minute and a half this at. And again, this is match point in the favor of cat noises. If they win this round, we will be moving on to map two. If cowardly dogs win it, we'll be going into overtime. And so right now, looks like how do cat noises want to aggress onto this? Currently, they're down 20%, but that's really nothing to write home about uh, or anything big. But Jarrett. Taking out an early nice job by Banny. Demento going in for a stab. Will he be able to get it? Such a long run up. My voice is higher and nothing. Okay. He's doing nothing. Jared's going to be back up now. Come on. Your voice can get higher, Sigafu. We, we, we'll hear it by the end of the night. <laughs> so uh, we had the flank of Cat Noises trying to get something, maybe try to get into the lobby and get another uh, pick onto Nursey, but good job by Cowardly Dogs. They uh, they fought them off, but actually the Uber is going to get forced out anyway. Uh, there goes Bull trying to get anything onto Daffodil, but unfortunately nothing to be found, so that's going to mean 100% advantage and tons of picks in the favor of Cat Noises. They're going to be able to cap this without any resistance, and Cowardly Dogs know it, and this is a problem. They have to get in and they got to get that uber out of daffodil sooner than later by the time you have your uber you're going to kind of be too much in danger zone of losing this map yeah billy soros had a chance at the medic when he was down to 60 hp uh but it was uh it just he got scared because that heavy was right there and i'm kind of wondering if billy source needs to switch off he hasn't been protecting nursey enough here comes in the bomb in from bull Dan danny's gonna do it as well they get the force off the spy goes down but Spamfest will stay. No, Spamfest went down as well, so no sentry gun here. Dong is jumping up and eating a lot of damage from the heavy. Banny going to cross the point as Mirror Man is doing some damage onto the enemy combo. But this is kind of the last chance. Only 20 seconds left on the clock. They do have 100% Uber Charge ready to go, but they're kind of figuring out how do they want to push this. And it looks like they're going to just go straight across the point. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I, I think there's, there's opportunity to get this, especially... 100% uber they don't want to use it and you might not be able to have your cake and eat it too you're gonna have to use this uber at some point and they do but someone also needs to be capping at the same time so very awkward uber with just the pyro billy source uh doing a lot of damage no carson what? is still alive he's got so much hp and the heavy weapons guy is gonna close it out 3-1 for cat noises what <laughs> Like, what just happened there? This is insane. As Carson, like, they, like you could just see Billy Soros, like, he didn't know who he wanted to focus down. Like, should he chase the medic? Should he chase the, Thanks, like, kill the heavy? You know, it was the, the, the whole thing of, like, the starving dog with two bowls of food and he ends up eating none. Like, that's what happened to Billy Soros there. Is he had a chance to kill the medic? Maybe. A chance to kill the heavy? Definitely. And he decided just to die, and then the heavy ended up saving the game to be able to put them out. And it just seems the missteps of the cowardly dogs are kind of some of the small things that are happening there that ultimately lost them this uh, this map. And this is the pick of them. But uh, as we bring up the logs here, Alto, what did you see in that first half? That first map, I should say. 
it's funny because I, I feel like we cast a cursed Billy right when, you know, right during that pause, we came and talked about how crazy his denials were. You know, where it, it, it seemed like at that point throughout that first round, any time anyone jumped over that roof, anything they shot just immediately got reflected back. Feels like immediately after that, that kind of stopped happening. I know you mentioned it that one mid where Mirror Man bombed over and got like a 3k on ramp. You know, he he just wasn't reflecting things, it felt like. And at that point, when you're playing Pyro on Coal Plant, your, you know, your main role as a class is to reflect things and protect your medic and allow your other classes to do work. And if you're not doing that, then there's no real point in you playing Pyro. You know, he was the the Ubers were generally pretty mismatched. You know, you never saw even Uber exchanges where he could just deny the you know the Uber and kind of push it out. So I, I feel like you mentioned at one point he sh you thought he should have switched. I think he should have switched the second you know he stopped really hitting all those reflex because if you're not doing that, you know, I think that pretty much gave it felt like it gave Cat Noises what was a player advantage at all times. And then as I kind of alluded to before, I think Spam Fest on that gun was doing again so much work we've seen it so many times and teams still give it to her right just even it felt like when uh demento wasn't playing uh spy when he was on heavy yeah he had that one nice play where he was under bats and he got an early force off but he needed to be on spy to get that gun out and he's he's definitely very good at spy and i think him playing spy was the correct decision because it's the only thing that can really take that gun out of that shutter it removes kind of like an active combat class for Cowardly Dog. So when you have Billy already really not fulfilling his role, as he should be, and then you have a spy on top of that end with Andrew on Sniper, that's three classes immediately that really aren't, you know, actively fighting anyone. It's, it's a playstyle that can win when your Sniper is going off, your Spy is going off, and your Pyro is protecting your med. Um, I've, you know, I've played on, it was, uh, what was it, it was Faint at the time with, you know, some of these same players, and it's a playstyle, it's pretty feast or famine, I would say, where when it's working, it works really well, and there's not a lot of things you can do to it, but when it's not working, alternatively, it fails really hard, because that whole kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's all, it's all built, like, it's all, the foundation is being able to protect your med, and allowing your other classes to do enough work, to put out enough pressure, that that spy can then start getting picks, and it all snowballs on each other. So I think the class changes really needed to come in for um, for Cowardly Dogs earlier and just see see if they can mix anything up because as we can see on the logs, Billy really not having that great of a performance statistically, but also just, you know, stats aren't everything and he, I don't think he was doing his job either. Whereas, you know, those flex classes on, um, on Cat Noises, even though we saw Fallen, you know, getting outpaced by Andrew, they kept they kept, he kept, he had the uh, he had similar deaths which was pretty good but Andrew was putting out more frags it just doesn't matter when you have that gun putting out so much pressure it's like an eighth man on the field so with you know with the spy with the sniper if he wasn't always getting picks with the pyro not doing his job it was like an eight v five in the favor of cat noises and once they kind of got their groove going after that first round it's why you know cowardly dogs has such a hard time really getting anything done yeah that that really is and i mean looking at the logs here i mean even with all of that andrew uh stepping up the plate did top frag there though carson uh doing a good job he actually second fragged and he really did a good job uh kind of with that and so um we can see here that uh looking through these logs i mean speedy and mere man i mean i thought that it was going to be Jer banny as well as dongus who were going to come out on top but you know, Speedy and Mirror Man just went absolutely nuts on the flank. Banny being outfragged by Speedy by six. Mirror Man almost doubling the frags in favor of Adongis. But if you just looked at that first round, you wouldn't believe that, would you, Vox? Yeah, and, and it is kind of funny that we can look at Banny's stats, see him get 414 DPM, and kind of, I mean, personally feel like, eh. I kind of wish he could have done more. Uh, it, it's so it really hats off to the flank of Cat Noises. Uh, Mirror Man, I think, still by far my MVP. He got four medic picks, nine sniper picks, and in a map where Andrew was going off that 33, those 33 frags over 400 DPM. The fact that he was he was getting after the sniper the most just goes to show that he knew how, who to focus and was doing a good job at that. Um, also, you know, just to note. Uh, we, as we saw, Nursia did die quite a few times, died twice as much uh, as Daff, which is never going to be a winning recipe for success. And Nursi, a medic that we look to and often get surprised at how many assists she can get. Uh, also, Daff, Daff with 27 assists, Nursi with only 10. So it, it's it's just kind of a, a lackluster showing out of uh, 
out of the cowardly dogs especially on their own map pick uh and like we said in the beginning it, it was a map pool that i felt favored uh favored cat noises so now cowardly dogs on the back foot going into their opponent's map there's a lot of work that they need to do uh but if any team is capable it's it's definitely this group of people and i'm thinking you know i'm kind of wondering as we're moving on to upward that is the second map in the series so we started on coal plant we're moving into upward which is the best of three series and then if needed we'll go into a golden map the third map overtime map whatever you want to call it uh that'll be borneo if the cowardly dogs comes down with this but as we're moving to upward you know i'm kind of curious also uh, you know now that i'm thinking about it andrew's definitely stepping it up against fallen was upward a good pick given kind of the way that the map plays for snipers um it's i think it's hard to tell i mean i think andrew coming out is to be expected i would have liked to have seen fallen do a little more to contest them and maybe um what was i gonna say maybe cat noises were kind of banking on that as upward, especially on some of the points, can be very sniper dependent, you know, especially on first and second, I would say. It's almost impossible to push if you don't have that sniper down. But I feel like coming into this, if I'm if I'm Cowardly Dogs, I may be thinking, okay, this isn't our map pick, but I'd be kind of breathing a bit of a a bit of a you know breathing out a little bit, because when you come back to upward, you're playing a lot more standard. I guess whereas that the whole gun in shutter, you know, running a spy and whatnot on Cold Plan, I think might have maybe thrown them off a little bit because when you add that gun on, it almost adds like a almost like a mini game, you know, to the game already where it's like balancing the gun and coordinating things with your spy that just it can be done, but it complicates things a lot. And I feel like playing upward if Andrew is going off, then yeah, I do think cat noises might be a little more worried now than they were coming into this. Because if uh if cowardly dogs are able to just, you know, get their get take down fallen on offense as it does look like they're starting off pushing. They might be able to get some snowballs going off because Famfest will have to build her gun back, you know, won't have the kind of uh, ability of having her uh, explosive classes. We saw like Mirman going off last time. He won't be able to sack in as much as he was before. So, again, if uh, if they can go off of Andrew and get that momentum and kind of snowball things, I think things can turn it around. Alternatively, if Fallen just stays alive, then I think uh, Cat Noises have a very good chance of taking this. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is their map. This is what they wanted to play. They're going to feel confident. Engineers can definitely do a lot of work in here, but as you said, snipers, uh, this is a very sight light. There's a very long sight lines. Uh, and what a sight line is, is basically, I don't know if I need to explain that. It's just, you can see the enemy team, basically. You know, for anybody who's uh, just joining us out here tonight. Actually, Vox, I've been doing it. Vox, do you want to talk a little bit about what Prolander is for anybody who's not familiar with it? Yeah, so Prolander is, I feel like probably more people have been introduced to Sixes or Highlander. So uh, Prolander kind of takes in my opinion, the best of both worlds where Highlander can get pretty chaotic. So you have the reduced amount of players, uh, but you still have really the ability to to kind of mix and match and, and get in there and, and play the classes that you want to play. So it's 7v7 and what really makes it dynamic is the fact that you never know what your opponent's going to run at any time. You know, you get the usual suspects, you usually have a sniper, you usually have a medic, but there's that extra little meta game inside where uh, when you know that they have to run an engineer does that inform your decision to run spy and not only that the whitelist is pretty wide open too so there's a lot more room for experimentation to see what kind of weapons work what kind of weapons don't and although a lot of players still do kind of stick to you know to what they know uh because there's that afforded um afforded experimentation there's always room for a player to come in and, and use something different and just kind of break the game and and tilt it in your team's favor a bit all right, real quick, two word answers here. Alto, uh, predictions for this map. Mission begins in 30 seconds. Cat noises, 2 1. All right, and I will take uh, Vox. What are your prediction? Uh, I think Cowardly Dogs bring it back here. I'm with Alto. I think it's 2 1 in the favor of Cat Noises, and they win the grand finals. This is a $4,000 prize pool that they're playing for. $2,700. I'm sorry, $2,100 for the first place team. I'm not. There's not that much money there. Uh, $2,100 for the first place team. Also, if you guys want to try out Prolander, rgl.gg slash pugs. We also have a cup coming up cup.rgl.gg. And here we go. The gates are going to be coming down. What's typically run is what's called a sacrifice wave or sac wave, where you send your players in, you try to get a force onto the enemy medic. Uh, because you respawn so quickly on the offense, your respawns are only like five seconds, roughly. And so you're trying to just get a force off onto Daffodil, but Banny, uh, getting on the playground, here comes in Dongus. He's going to get a lot of damage done to him, and he probably should go down, but he does take Carson with him. And so you can see Carson down for 15 seconds, Dongus down for nine. Actually, he got put on a bad respawn wave there, but 
Either way, the big thing though is that teleporter allows the team to get forward quickly uh, for the defense. Yeah, and there there goes Bull jumping in with the base jumper. I always kind of laugh when I see a Temple Man running that. Uh, we, we've, I, I made fun of it one time and saw some big plays, but nothing happening there uh, just yet. And just, you know, a little extra sack wave going in, not finding anything. So it's going to be up to this Uber, I think, from the Cowardly Dogs to take this point. And Andrew finding a nice pick on the Speedy to start. Uh, he's going to take that any day of the week, and they just got to find... The, you know, find their lane in because right now Cat Noise is holding fine. And Mirror Man off of Soldier on to Pyro, uh, but he's actually away from the Uber as it's pushed in here. Finally, he will come in here. Uber is going to jump onto him, but it's even Uber on either side. A lot of flash, and his dog is getting a lot of damage off from the playground. Finally, does go down as the frames actually are going in the favor slowly but surely in the favor of the Cowardly Dog. The Sentry Gun is up, but Daphil's already starting to run out. But here comes in Bull. He's jumping over the top. Can he find Daphil? Gets a sticky perfectly underneath of his feet. Bull should go down here. As Speedy, uh, yeah, so it looks like they have no scout on defense right now, uh, currently. I'm kind of curious if they will mix that up. Uh, I don't think Pyro is going to be as good on the second point here, but given the respawns are so slow right now, they might opt to just give up the second point or play it really, really passively and play for a third. As Dong is pushed <laughs> off the map, level 3 Sentry got doing work. Yeah, I don't think they expected Spamfest to have a level 3 all the way back there. I mean, there's still so much space for the Cowardly Dogs that they, they pretty much have all of second. It's just a matter of having one good push, and they should have it. Actually, Nursey oh. trying to escape, and Speedy with the Cow Mangler finding too, and that's a tilter. I mean, you have, you have all your players alive, you have a couple around you, and it's the Cow Mangler of all weapons to take you down. And if uh, Cowardly Dogs were not in great spirits after the first map that's not a great way to start the second yeah and right now but the problem is is that cat noises they got disconnected like they had some people pushed out the medic stayed back and that was partially because dong is pushed into them and so now as much as they're not in a horrible spot they do have a hundred percent recharge ready to go but you know they don't have a scout to put uh, to go out with the super on the cart is being pushed for they need to either pop and contest this or just get out and it looks like they're just going to take their uber charge and they're going to go home with it all right nobody gets to play with the uber charge but them and so they're going to back out here. Mirror Man still on Pyro. Pyro better on the third point than it is on the second. And uh, a solid Uber advantage here. But this is the furthest point to push a cart pretty much for any payload map as Dong gets jumping in here, goes down. But they have plenty of time for Cowardly Dogs to get an Uber charge up here. Yeah, and, and so here's the awkward thing we always talk about with taking the third point. You always feel like if you find an advantage, you want to go in and push. But it may not always be smart because the cart may not be in a position to do it. And the fact that these Ubers are even might actually be good for the Cowardly Dogs because it's going to slow down, uh, slow them down just a little bit so they don't have to push until uh, they, they definitely need to, uh, you know, not kind of falling into that trap. But we'll see how they can create an advantage for themselves as that cart goes up the first little ramp and they've got a couple more to go through, a couple picks going into the favor of Cat Noises. Uh, but still, Billy Soros on Heavy <laughs> just pushing the cart. He, uh, he gets it pretty far, and, and that's not bad for a first attempt there from uh, from Cowardly Dogs. And Speedy did stop it, but got onto a 22-second respawn, as Banny's now going to be pushing the cart, eating some damage there from Garrett, but here comes Indongus from the flank play. Banny goes down early from a headshot. They're going to be using the supercharge onto a heavy, I'm sorry, onto the pyro as well as the demo, but the cart's not being pushed up right now, as Andrew's going to get popped up, actually, even to a better position as he's going to drop back down to get a health pack. Bull still alive, finally does go down, uh, but now it's just Jarek to defend the cart, and he does a good job at that, getting the stickies where he needs to. As Mirror Man using, I believe, the Scorch Shot to harass the enemy team. Nursey down, actually, to 63 HP. Speedy can find a rocket onto her, but not going to be able to do that. The cart's still sitting right below that second point, and if you don't notice, on the map, uh, the cart has to go up a path, and if you stop it, it'll roll back down. So the hills are very important to get up on this map. Yeah, you really, you need a couple players forward to make sure that your scout or whoever's going to be sitting on the cart has that space, doesn't get spammed out by stickies or, or rockets or anything like that. And Andrew finding a pick on Fallen is very huge. That means that they're, that wide open sight line is not to be, uh, don't have to worry about that. So the cart does get up at the second ramp. As Uber gets used for both sides a little bit sooner from Cat Noises and they don't find anything off it. Actually, neither team really finding anything with their Uber. So at least they, um, if you're on the side of Cowardly Dogs, it's out of the way. Uh, but this has given Cat Noises a chance to get back in on a defense and that level three gun still up 
it, again, is just being a nuisance. They they haven't taken it down, and it's just pushing them back. Yeah, this is a little bit of a challenge. Speedy, again, dying. I think Speedy's being a little bit too much of a roamer, but the cart does roll back down the second hill, as you mentioned. That's very big. That's going to be working up that much harder, but Cowardly Dogs are going to dry push this as much as they can. Actually, Billy Soros going down incredibly low, but Fallen getting taken out by Demento. The level 3 Cinch Gun is still alive, but here comes in Nursey. Carson actually has a drop on Bull and Nursey if he can take an angle on it. Here comes in Speedy as well, makes the jump in, but he's going to go for Nursey. Gets the Fright Bull down incredibly low as Jer trying to fight for this cart, but the Heavy, so much heals, is going through it. He's going to be able to get up the hill. Mirror Man and Jer doing everything they can, but no! Oh! Just on the edge, and it rolls back down. And I can't tell you how important that is, because that pick right there is going to make it so they can't be able to get it. If they got it up the hill, then you can spy cap it. It forces Cat Noises to put somebody on the cart. So huge, huge pick at a critical time. And right now, this is creating a very terrible time for the Cowardly Dogs. I really wish that I could, like, we could see, ex like, how many ticks were left in order to get that uh, on the final thing. It looks just so, so close, and that's a heartbreaker for the Cowardly Dogs. Uh, so that cart is also moving backwards, so if it goes for too long, it could potentially go down that second ramp, which would be an even bigger disaster. So I think you need to get someone over there. Maybe uh, it looks like they have Demento on Pyro. He's going to touch the cart <laughs> and immediately get sniped down by Fallen. I mean, uh, you didn't even have a chance to do anything with it. 100% right now for Cat Noises. Coming up on 100 is Nursey. Uh, but still, these last couple attempts by the Cowardly Dogs have been stuffed and fallen. He's really stepping up now. Another headshot finds Bull, and that's going to slow down any potential push. They just need to get on the card. If they put Banny or somebody on the card when Speedy's down, just anything they can do to just... I think the biggest thing for the Cowardly Dogs is when they have opportunities to push the cart, it just hasn't been working out great for them. When Billy just got on the cart and literally stood on it, he actually did a decent amount of work, but we do have Ubercharge on either side. Bull gets disconnected just for a split second there, and Death will finally pop, but it's going to be a much better Uber. Here comes the Mirror Man, jumping onto the cart, pushes the, pie, the Heavy off the cart. They're not going to be able to push it up now. Mirror Man onto the Meta, gets the fray, and there you go. Mirror Man, I think, used the Blast Jump from the demo to get forward. Bull is going to go down from Speedy, who's going to go all the way back. He's going to probably die in the process, but no, a headshot ringing out as the Heavy goes down into the Cat Noises, clawing their way back into this. They're not clawing their way back into this. They still had it. They're holding on. They're the hang on kitty, because they're hanging on to this point. Hang in there. Yeah, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna have to be their like team logo next season. Uh, but Fallen, you, you want to talk about being hot and cold? He's on a 5K right now, and we talked about him needing to be a player that's stepping up. And this defense is obviously a, a huge team effort, but he's done his part and some. So yeah, it's just really good job. Billy Sor is uh, still on heavy, trying to push forward. Nursey right behind. Uber advantage for Cat Noises and. You wonder, I mean, Demento is a pretty solid heavy, and he, right now he's on Pyro. I, I don't know if maybe those two want to switch it up, but I don't know. Who knows what the internals of the team are, but Cat Noise is still just looking so good, and, and Cowardly Dogs have not been able to, to really do anything in the past, I want to say at least three, three and a half minutes. I've never seen inside of Invite Highlander the third point potentially be held by two teams of such equal skill level, but... Right now, I think it's also the Cowardly... Anytime anybody touches the cart for the Cowardly Dogs, they just get annihilated. Tannoise has been doing such a good job, but Speedy's down. Currently, this is when they do it. They're pushing up. Banny's on the cart. This is exactly what they needed to do like seven minutes ago. But Nanny, Banny's being contested by Jared at this time. But the cart's up the final path. And finally, the Cowardly Dogs will come down with this point. But this is exactly what they've been missing out on. What just happened there? They pushed up, they put somebody on the cart. That's how you have to push in this game because enemy teams tend to be too good. They come down with it, but 9 minutes and 26 seconds through 3 points is in a terrible time. You should be winning the game in Pro Lander in about 7 minutes. Maybe 8 minutes is like a long time. 9.30 through 3 is very bad. Do you think uh, Cowardly Dogs just figured out that the scout caps at double speed? Cause <laughs> Maybe Danny's just <laughs> learning this after all these years of fragging. Yeah, right. Uh, so, I mean, already aggressive, and this is exactly what you need out of the Cowardly Dogs. They've already taken upper control, but Spamfest is a level two, ready to stop any potential aggression. Speedy uh, doing some work in upper, just trying to take it back, and uh, really, I, I think they have it if they want it. It's just always difficult for uh, for the defending team to try to get into upper once you've lost it, because uh, you have to walk through sight lines and, and all that kind of thing. So. 
Carson's gonna burn out before he can get to a pack, and now you have Daffodil alone in upper. He's gonna get the hell out of Dodge, but that cart isn't moving forward with seven players alive, and I, I'm just, again, not sure who, who's gonna take the, uh, put that on their back. And I'm not really sure why this Uber charge was used. Jared had Banny jump onto him. Billy's horse now going in here, and oh, he's gonna get pushed down into the pit. Here comes out the Uber charge. The Sentry Gun got picked up. It's being reset up, but it should go down here. Right now, only five players alive for the defensive side as the cart's starting to roll in here, and more players just being traded out. Carson's finally gonna go down. Dong is covering out this spam fest. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna die. She shouldn't have a chance. That is a wipe in the favor of the Cowardly Dogs. They're gonna walk this in. Nursey's gonna taunt on the cart. Gets a little bit of a guitar flair there. 11-11, the emo hour is uh, maybe why the Cowardly Dogs are a little bit sad right now after that time they put up their solid push there in the end. Because Cat Noises, I mean, they just, they got a little bit too passive that they needed to get back to the control of the of the upper. But we got a 60 seconds of downtime. Elto, my man, what did you see their 60 second review of the first round there? If my, El if my boy's Elto, Elto. Hey there, my love. Knock, knock. Alto's gone. Guess not. Guess not. But uh, I don't know. See, 11-11, personally, I thought make a wish. And I, I think mm. that, I think Cowardly Dogs are going to need to wish a lot of things go their way. I mean, they still have so many players, of course, on their roster that they don't have to wish to the stars. They, it's, it, it, they're incredibly capable of just doing the same exact thing to, uh, to Cat Noises. And I think that's what you got to keep in mind. The fact that you, you came in the stronger team. Uh, at least, you know, depending on who you talk to, in my mind. So, you know at any point, if you just turn it on, you should, you know, be able to outskill them. And I, I don't know, I see them potentially coming back. Maybe not in this round, but in subsequent. Well, see what they can do. I mean, obviously, you can... The, the great thing with Upward or any payload map is that uh, you can lose a round, and that's just totally... You can have a terrible round, but that's okay, because you come back with, to the next one on a clean slate, but we'll see. Maybe the Cowardly Dogs have it in them to hold on to this. They do have the Crit Sticky sneaking around here. Not, not going to find anything from Bull, but Andrew going down early, so no sniper for the defense. 18 seconds, and you can see right now, Crow I'm sorry, the Cat Noises, they're already just walking forward. They know they're not going to lose their head, so why not just push up straight ahead? Yeah, I mean, just why not? They obliterate. Uh, the gun goes down. Trying to rebuild it right now is Demento, but being pressured, the Uber does get used to escape, and it looks to be successful. I mean, that's that's all you can really hope for right now is just trying to keep players alive, and Nursey tries to go back in to, to heal Banny up, but he's going to go down. 11-second respawn, uh, and the aggression already in from Cat Noises. They want to choke him off at their spawn as this uh, cart moves forward. Nope. They're, uh, they're playing a little passive, which I can respect. Don't want to get too aggressive, and then the cart gets lost in the fray. So now we can see, walking in here, Demento eats a headshot early on here, dropping down, and Mirman. Oh, he tried to go for a big bomb in, but he actually ran it up into uh, some of the, the walls, and now they're just bleeding players. Banny, he's seeking blood. Finally, he doesn't have to worry about an objective, so he can do what he was designed to. Frag, frag for days. And so Banny going down to the tunnel, he should find one onto Jared Gaffel. Very curious position, should be able to escape with his life in the 100%. And a solid retake from the Cowardly Dogs. We didn't see that out of Cat Noises. They were a little bit too timid, but they got the good third hole. But now, here we go, 100% ready to go on either side. Yeah, and, and this is important for Cat Noises here. Actually, I want to say it's more important for Cowardly Dogs. If they can hold this point, if you can shave a couple of minutes off, this is going to bode so well for your defense. So kind of a critical moment on this Uber. Whoever comes out on top is going to, you know, kind of cement themselves in a pretty good spot in the round. Of course, after the Ubers get used, you never know what's going to happen um, in the post fight. But right now with two players down, I feel like this has to be the push out of Cat Noises, but they're kind of uh, they're kind of delaying. Bull goes down late, which is another solid pick. But uh, as we say that, Banny's back up. Dongus is on the way too. Actually, Banny playing alone, out of position. This is not a not a great spot for a solo scout with everyone uh, everyone staring you down. So there he goes, and this cart continues to inch uh, ever forward. Yeah, Cat Noise is continuing on the prowl. They're seeing what they can do, but Brave, they want to use Uber Charge, but Bull gets taken out as he's running forward. Nursey drops him from a headshot of Fallen, and so now this Uber Charge is going to pick up two. Oh no, Nursey! Nursey goes down for Mirrorman. They wanted to clean them up in the double window, but they're going to get taken out. Speedy actually just walked past Demento. 
I don't know if they know he's up there. Yeah, they finally do spot him out. And Daffodil went down as well from Andrew on a body shot. But they come down with the point, which is the more important part. And uh, just, I, it's always, that is one of the hardest areas to push out from Uber. And I feel like you need a scout. You can't do that with a demo and heavy. It's just never going to work out in your favor. Yeah, I, scout, scout can just avoid so much. And obviously that movement speed is huge. Movement is everything in TF2. And, uh just kind of not going to work out in their favor but this is this is the dreaded uh, third point we'll see if cowardly dogs can do uh do to cat noises what was done to them but the fact that they've already lost two and you have mirror man and sea house uh could be a problem not only that but they're running no engineer and spam fest was hugely impactful uh come that third point and they've already been bullied out I, no one's pushing the cart and usually that'd be a pretty big faux pas you know always like to point that out but the fact that they have so much forward ground, it might not matter. As long as someone starts to commit in the next couple seconds, which Mirror Man does get on. Um, but in that, they may have afforded a chance at a defense. Well, Banny was cleaning up Fred's left and right. Finally does go down, but look at this. Nobody's contesting the cart. Foles doing some spam damage onto the combo. Just everybody's staying in cart. They have three players onto it now. Engineer, actually, no, it's just going to be Dongus going in. We're not Dongus. That's going to be Soldier Mirror Man going in to get it, but Andrew on a 6k takes on Speedy, but look at Spamfest, the little engineer that could, no! The cart rolls down again, but look at this, Mirror Man jumping right back on it right away, hiding from the sniper, and he's gonna get it up the hill. He understands the objective-based gameplay of TF2, and he's gonna be able to get this up the hill. The Uber Charge comes out, but it's gonna get absolutely nothing. What a terrible Uber for the offense. Carson's gonna get traded out here, but here comes in Speedy. He doesn't have a such gun to contest with, but Banny does win the 1v1. And the respawns are going to help the offense here. They also have a teleporter so for the offense, and so that's going to help them get to that front line faster. So they're going to be able to use that respawn timer to their advantage. That's the benefit of having an offensive engineer. You get kind of worse DM, but you get everybody else to the front line that much faster. Yeah, and that may, may have been... Um may have been kind of turning the tide there because the fact that they got so many picks and they got those players in early they're able to jump onto the cart and now six minutes remain just about uh to take this last point and it's not a i wouldn't say last is is very easy of course we we've all played in those pubs where you get stuck forever trying to um push the last point so even though it was respectful time uh just from third to last for cowardly dogs they uh they could really really uh change things here for for cat noises if they can just get a solid uh three four minutes out and just kind of get that panic setting in for cat noises more mistakes are going to happen from the offense if you uh if you can make that andrew picks up another one on a 9k taking down speedy on the cart so both speedy as well as manifest down so no pushers but here comes the bomb on the nurse he gets the force off and speedy is gonna get out i'm sorry mirror man's gonna get out what a play from mirror man jumps in gets the force around three other players and gets out alive Billy Soros does go down, so no pyro here, and that's going to be a big pick, because now can they walk into the enemy team, they're not going to get blasted back, one goes down a bull, Nursi as well as Banny get on the back foot, but finally, they go down, the cinch gun takes down the, the scout, but not before Nursi gets taken down, so now Daffodil with Carson in the upper area, and they have that uber advantage, the respawns are coming out for the defense, but how long can they hold on? Yeah, it's going to be incredibly dif uh, difficult with Uber disadvantage and that gun going down. I think it really comes down to Andrew or, or just anyone if they can make a pick onto Daffodil currently at 70%. So we'll see that cart is just creeping closer. Times two going down. Jarrett trying to get some, or sorry, Bull trying to get some damage with some sticks onto it. He's got a few sticks, uh, doesn't ex necessarily get the kill, but this is kind of a uh, kind of bad move. Spam fest falls uh, down into the pit. The Uber gets used onto the cart, and I don't know if they needed to use it. I think uh, I, I, I think Carson was doing a, god, a good job just capping it, but it might not matter, and the cart's going to go in. Four minutes remained on the clock there. They go up 1-0. Cat noise is due, so they've got a round and a map. This is going to have to be a full reverse sweep from uh, from the Cowardly Dogs if you're going to take this back. And that might be a mountain too tall even for them. Yeah, currently this is going to be match point for Cat Noises for the grand finals for the $2,100 prize. The Cowardly Dogs, they have some amazing players in their team. So do not count them out for an absolute second because I can tell you right now, Cat Noises in their thing is like, calm down. We got this. Let's control this. But we can't let ourselves get too confident because that's when you start making mistakes. And so here we go with uh, coming into this. Let's take a look at the logs. 
And my boy Elso, he's been uh, behind us. He's been with us. And looking at these logs here, Speedy top fragging for his team. Actually, out fragging Andrew, who went insane on defense. Uh, what did you see in that first round uh, from both these teams? Yeah, I do want to shout out Andrew going an insane 21 and 4. Only four deaths on Sniper on any map is pretty ridiculous, especially a half that was, you know, as long as this one. I think that was, what, an 11 minute time and a 7 minute time or so? So 18 minutes and only four deaths on Sniper is really impressive, but it, it just wasn't enough. And it goes back to that third push. You know, we saw we saw what Cat Noises did as both teams ready up here and we go into setup time. Cat Noises, you, 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 I think your exact words were what a terrible Uber coming out of Cat Noises, but. They got forward while they had someone on cart. And like, I, I know that's a pretty advanced concept that, you know, Carolee Dogs may not have heard of it, but they left one person on cart and then Ubered forward solely to clear their cart pusher to get the hill up. Meanwhile, it felt like for five minutes straight, it was looking like uh, Carolee Dogs were just running seven people forward and like, wow, look at our, look at our strong Uber. We got a kill. And then that person respawned, no one was on cart, and then Fallen sniped whoever was on cart off of it. And they could never get it up that last hill, and I do want to throw some of the shade onto Danny for that, because he was the one leading the charge, forcing Billy to be on cart. What if Billy was in his position, in uh, in that bucket area, you know, U-turn or bucket or hose or bend, whatever you want to call it, I think they would have gotten that point significantly faster, and they averaged a minute and a half through each point. So they, if they had pushed third faster, they could have been looking at a seven, eight minute time, and that last half would have come down to seconds instead of minutes. We'll see what they're able to do coming down. The few seconds are ticking off here as the uh, probable sack waves. It's going to be Cat Noises starting out on offense. So the way that it works is one team sets a time they, and then they switch. So now it's going to be Cat Noises who are going to be setting the time. Cowardly Dogs are going to be uh, working against it. But early frag out from Falling Lord. Actually, both snipers taking down each other's soldiers as Banny's going to take down Jared as well. Another team has been doing a lot of suicide waves, uh, really, to try to get a force onto the enemy team. Uh, but why do you need to do that when you're just picking up so many frags from either side? So right now, also, interesting enough, no engineer here for the defense. So that's one thing we've seen uh, the Carly Dukes sometimes during the season, but uh, we'll see how that works out for them. Demento wasn't feeling confident on it, it seems like, and he definitely plays a good heavy, so curious how that's going to work out for them. Look, all you need is a Brass Beast and 450 HP. You're basically a sentry anyway, right? <laughs> but Andrew, Banny, Demento, Dongus, like, uh, why don't you shout out the entire team finding frags onto Cat Noises? So not a successful uh, not a successful sack wave at all. Of course, Daffodil was still safe, tucked in beside Spawn. But, uh, you know, Nursey, Nursey no pressure uh, on anything there just yet. And maybe sign of things to come for the Cowardly Dogs. And uh, it looks like Daffodil is out of spawn. So the Uber should be coming soon. Otherwise, very dangerous position to be in. Andrew, of course, still alive, always capable of uh, one shot. Act, speaking of one shot, there goes Bamfest, but the Uber is used. Pushing forward right now is Jarrett, and the Uber comes back in return from the Cowardly Dogs. Much better as Banny chases forward. Can he get anything done? It doesn't look like it. You just want to keep your numbers alive, but you can hold this first point even without Uber. You just got to make sure you back out at the slightest hint of danger. Yeah, and with. We also see Dongus, he's running the battalion's backup, which gives him a little bit more HP in general. But also when he pops the battalion's backup, which is the horn you hear, that gives his whole team a little bit of damage mitigation, as well as they can't die to headshots. And so that is a pretty big thing to do. use maybe post-Uber fights to kind of help give yourself the advantage. But right now, finally, might be the Cowardly Dogs are bleeding a few players. Cow the Cat Noise is getting enough frags to kind of scare them out. They're getting forward ground. They pick up another one, make that two. And with Andrew and Dongus down, they're going to have to run away. Yeah, now it's just can Nursey get out alive. Jared running forward for the frag, but it's going to be nice defense coming out from Banny, but two minutes off the clock from that first point. Very solid. And this is where a point where we saw Cat Noises struggle. They actually lost a decent amount of time on in the first round. So wondering if they can push it any better as they are getting up the hill. But uh, even Uber on the other side, looks like Cowardly Dogs, they're playing very careful on this. They're not playing on the hill at all. Well, save for Banny who goes down now. He was trying to escape. Uh, but again, still no engineer, which seemed to work out for the first point. Obviously, it's a little different coming here onto second. Dongus tried to save himself by tossing a rocket at his feet when he's landing, but uh, uh, no luck there. So Banny's on his way up. Fallen Lord was down, respawning now. I think if you're if you're cowardly dogs, there's a very interesting risk reward here, where with because you don't have an engineer, you want to try to get as aggressive as possible. But that being said, the Uber does get used two picks right now in the favor of cowardly dogs. 
uh, and I think they're they're gonna hold on to it. The the cart gets cleared by Dongus as well, so very solid hold, and this might give them the ability to to get aggressive here too. Yeah, we saw a pick from Demento. For some reason, Daffodil, I think he maybe got in a weird position. He's like, I'm gonna go saw the heavy, and so he went to saw the heavy, and he ended up um. Well, you can imagine what happens when you use the melee against a heavy weapons guy. <laughs> and so now Speedy is going to be getting onto the cart potentially. The thing without having engineers, you can get more flank plays, especially from your scout, because uh, he can kind of do what he wants. But now Dongus does go down 20 second respawn wave for him. And so that is going to help out this cart a little bit. But can they win these 1v1s against Banny? Uh, right now, great job out of the Cowardly Dogs, just winning the fights when they need to. And so that's just allowing them to hold on to this. They do also are coming up to that Uber right now. Um, and Spamfest is going to try to debate. They got a sp spot on Andrew if they want to take it, but neither of them saw that Andrew was right there against them. And so now with Daffodil, Daffodil going down to 17 HP, just eating that spam damage, but Demento goes down as well. So the hill completely in control of the Cat Noises, but with Daffodil so low, he needs Carson Sandwich to be able to get a little bit more forward. But yeah, bleeding players, just enough. Nice job out of Cat Noises, a mirror man, and it looks like Spamfest as well. I Yeah, I really love that. Uh just using Banny's own ego and DM against them, drops a mini sentry, and then they try to bait him into taking the fight, because like, Banny knows, oh, I can take a 1v1, I can take a 1v2, and then there's the mini sentry there uh, to do extra damage as well. So I, I love I love it. I love the, uh, the little metagame uh, that went on there. But we do have the cart outside of the tunnel, but, I mean, Cowardly Dogs still retain very heavy control. They have no presence on the cliff from the Cat Noises side, so uh, Bowl is just free to spam forward. We've got uh, we've got Banny playing aggressively. Dongus is going to be playing around too. Uh, so far, they've had a really, really strong defense, which uh, uh, which like really bodes well uh, for for them coming back into this one. Yeah, it's a really nice job out of the Cowardly Dogs. They kind of back up into their spawn, and then they're able just to regress out. Look at Cat Noises. All of them are currently inside of Tunnel. They're going to run into Demento. Mirror Man will get the frag. No, Billy Sori saves him just in time for Demento to be able to get this. But Jarrett coming up on the other side gets Nursey down to half HP. She does have 100%. Actually, she goes down to six uh, to very low as Daffodil as well. Ubercharge is going to come out from either side a little bit better for the red. But uh, can this lower tunnel push do anything? Demento still holding onto the cliff as Dongus as well as Banny, both uh, flank classes are just getting back up in just a few seconds. Demento is going to get a pick onto the sniper of all things. You don't see that happening a lot. But the big thing is just sustaining the fight. Cat Noises needs to sustain this. They need to hold aggressively on the hill and not let them get comfortable and get reset back up. Dongus, oh, he almost died from a, a kill there, landing on the ground. Sp Speedy all the way behind. And I think the distraction of Speedy is going to be enough for Cat Noises finally to take this. But Wow, great job out of Cowardly Dogs to bleed so much time off the clock. Yeah, and, and just it's it's everyone on their team stepping up. Uh, you know, Andrew, obviously, we've been talking to, uh, talking about him a lot. Of course, you can't always tell with in terms of points, but Dongus is up there on the scoreboard. Banny's still doing work as, as expected. So it, it's just the entire team seems to have raised this game. I don't think it's Cat Noises uh, kind of falling apart. I, I think Cowardly Dogs have kind of realized with their backs against the wall, you back an animal into a corner, it's going to fight to get out. So... Uh, we've got this cart moving forward 100% for both sides. Uh, this was kind of an interesting point for, for both teams when they tried to push it. Actually, Uber gets used early. What's it going to find? It doesn't look like anything. Billy Saur is there to absolutely deny it. Cart's not even up the first hill either. So uh, just nothing out of that Uber. And credit to, uh, credit to the Cowardly Dogs continuing uh, to show their dominance in this round. Yeah, I mean, Bull, look at how aggressive Bull is with Nursey as well as Banny. They're not letting anybody touch the cart. Huge plays coming out as they're just being annihilated. Cat Noises is. And Cowardly Dogs, and here comes in Carson. The sneaky play comes in from behind. Picks up the medic, picks up the scout. And now Nursey, oh, Nursey got so lucky. Banny died a moment later. 20 second respawn. Nursey only on a 10 second respawn wave. <laughs> so Nursey, very lucky. Only is going to be a down maybe 20, 30% Uber charge. But the cart's still at the bottom of the first hill. Yeah, Billy Soros getting headshot is uh, pretty important. I mean, Pyro can do so much, especially with that pit on the other side. It, all it takes is one nice air blast and everyone starts to fall off. So the cart does make it up the first little ramp. Uh, they are going to jump off of it as uh, it looks like Mirror Man went in for a pick. Speedy is down as well, but Spamfest is still there to, to pick up the cart pushing duty.
and uh, with a couple of members down on the side of the cowardly dogs and the uber uh, advantage in cat noises i think they know they smell blood in the water and they're they're just pushing this cart and bullying cowardly dogs out of it this is third point capped and cowardly dogs need to think about backing up and saving for for last yeah andrew going for some miracle plays but he's not going to get dongus as well but uh Actually, Dongus will trade out, but I mean, he's going to be down for 20 seconds. Mirman's only going to be down for five, so maybe not the best trade in the world. Wanted to get Daffodil, obviously, or get a force off, so he should be back up in time. But right now, the team that did back up is the Cowardly Dogs. They have complete control of Upper, Mirman, Bull, Demento, Andrew, all sitting up there. Billy Source is going to get the, up there as well. Very important, and it's going to be pretty much... I, they're actually, they might do a seven-man upper hold as Dongus is up as well. Mirman running into Billy Source. Uh, finding out where they're all located, but here comes in Banny. He dropped down. He has a full buff. Will he be able to find Daffodil? He gets onto Daffodil, gets the force off as Uber is going to be used off. Nursey running around to the corner, but Billy Swords is going to get the Uber used onto him. Nursey did eat a pipe before that popped off, so she's down uh, to half HP, but with so many frags going in the favor of the Cowardly Dogs. Oh, Carson and Jared pick up two somehow, and they might be able to turn this around with the respawns coming up right now. Yo, my God, and there's Jared finding two more, Andrew and Nursey. Uh, arguably two of the most important, I mean, obviously the medic, the most important uh, class, and I think they may have done it. I, I It's crazy to what? think, but off of, off of those picks, Banny goes down, Mirror Man finding two more. This is the cart capped. I mean, it's 940, which I, I, you go back to that first cap by, uh, by Cowardly Dogs, it's not great, but considering what could have been, the fact that they could have been stuffed, huge, huge heroics from Cat Noises to get that cap. I just want to give some stuff. Huh? What? The, like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's all I can say is like, like that was they easily won. There was only two players basically forward for their team, Jarrett and Carson, and they ended up killing almost the entire team of the Cowardly Dogs to bring that back. Like insane heroics, as you said, stepping up there. Elsa, let's give it a second chance here. Are you here, my brother? My brother? Yeah, I, my my insane analysis on that is that everyone on Cowardly Dogs was playing like this Highlander. They had a sentry gun. When in fact they did not have a sentry gun, so Jarrett just walked directly in through the tracks, shot three stickies up into upper and completely white Nursey, and I think that was full there, so I don't know if that was a mental slip or what, but, you know, I, I mentioned that seven man up, upper defense has that one obvious weak point and then they can just walk in from lower, and once, once Cat Noises realized that, they, uh, they kept the point complete, but that second hold was pretty impressive, and I think we saw what Cowardly Dogs can do, you know, when Andrew gets going and they're allowed to kind of play the map as normal, and if they push a similar time and just cap third uh, more quickly than they did last time, we should be seeing a third, a third of the round here on upwards. And so now we get onto this. This is do or die for the Cowardly Dogs. They need to beat the time that they defended against, which is very doable. Nine minutes and uh, 30 seconds or so is something they can do against. Mirror Man goes down. 19 second respawn. No pyro. And so Bowl's going to jump in here. Nobody can reflect. He's falling slowly. Stickies from the sky. The sentry gun is down as well. And so he's going to be able to get some damage. Gets the force off onto Daffodil. And that's a very successful. Uh, despite all of them dying, they got what they wanted, which is force onto the medic. And so now they're going to reset here. Just real quick, I want to plug. Uh, this is RGL.GG, the grand final matchup, 4K, $2,100 to the first place. If you guys want to try out ProLander, RGL.GG slash pugs. We also have a cup coming up where 50% teams win keys. And uh, we can see a bomb there from the soul. They're not going to be able to get cup.RGL.GG. As it looks like the Cowardly Dogs, they want to push this, but Jarrett is still holding forward. Yeah, I think they've got this, though. Uh, Merriman Carson go down and even without those picks because when you're on the defense you want to back off early you've kind of you've kind of uh you know you're kind of just on a hair trigger and good attempt from bowl and dongus i really thought they could have found daffodil uh but unfortunately not finding the the explosives to connect there uh they still back them off and 7v7 now as uh as everyone respawns on either side andrew going for a really aggressive play uh, unfortunately, <laughs> doesn't find the shot. That would have been that would have been highlight real worthy uh, had he done that. But Andy going down to, to Speedy, he's got that cow mangler back out. I kind of thought about it further. I mean, the fact that you're on defense, why not use the the cow mangler? You know they're not running an engineer anyway. Uh, but with Speedy falling. I don't know uh, how do how do cowardly dogs get back into this uh there you've got spam fest to contend with you've got hill control in the favor of cat noises it's just up to players to to find this pick I, i'm not sure if i'm a fan of spam fest's very passive sentry gun here 
Um, because it's not, he is actually going to finally move it up, but Bull now has ground. Can he get up in time? They do have 100%. They might just go for an exchange to allow this entry going to go. Nursey getting disconnected from Bull because it got popped way in the air. But Bull coming back up is going to be able to take down the sentry gun because Spamfest did not have the Wrangler up in time. And uh oh, so here comes in Speedy coming in from behind. Can he find it? Nursey surfing so high up. Can he get the break? Nursey drops that down. And I, she, I think she even almost got the saw, but is going to die. And so Daffodil is going to have about a 20 30% advantage in terms of Uber, but they don't have the player advantage and Cowardly Dogs, they're just walking forward based off of that. Yeah, this is absolutely perfect. I mean, this is great from Cowardly Dogs, just smart play. Your medic goes down, you go for broke. And, and the fact that they don't just like jump in, they jumped in with a purpose. Let's, let's find a pick. You see the sentry, everyone focuses that. They know cat noises run the, the back heel uh, after doing that. So this, now now we come to the third point and we, we had a lot of fun on Cowardly Dog's first attempt here, but they are so aggressive. There's so much carnage going back and forth. Spamfest is down, which is huge. Demento finds two, a backstab and the revolver. Billy Soros finds one more, but the cart is nowhere. I mean, I, I don't, there's no way you get all of those picks and the cart, but now that they have the wipe, they might actually be able to cap this. Well, here's the thing is that Cat Noises should 100% re-engage on this. They don't have Uber Charge yet, and this is a very easy point to be able to push back out onto if you actually give it a good attempt, because you're kind of, like, the people on the cart are so far away from everybody else, and here comes Infinity with the 2K, getting up huge, taking down Nursey, taking down Bolin. Yeah, that's going to be the calling card. Jarrett's going to be recommit here. Bol Billy going down incredibly well. The cart's moving up here. Dongus is going down low as well. And there you go, Cat Noises, they did lose some players. The respawn's already up here for the Cowardly Dogs, but the card's gonna be contested by Jared. Banny's gonna push onto it, but Mirman taking down Banny. Mirman gets pushed off the cliff. Can they do this? They have a 50, 60%, but Jared's alone on an island. Nursey down incredibly low of Carson Peak that he had the frag, but the card's still rolling for a lot of presence. A very different team of Cowardly Dogs. This time around, big backstab. And yeah, that's gonna be a daffodil going down. Great plays coming out from the Cowardly Dogs. Nursey did fall too. I, I didn't catch exactly to who. As Speedy jumps back in, he gets one, uh, but that's all he's gonna get. <laughs> Mirman tries to jump in. I respect the hustle, but Demento on that revolver. <laughs> it's just, he's on a 4K right now. I think only one backstab and three revolver kills. So you gotta love it. He's stepping up at a time they really needed him to do so. And uh, now they have just under five minutes to take this last point. Entirely doable, especially because there's no tiles present just yet. As Demento gets another, Jarek goes down. Bull with the pick onto Carson. Cowardly Dogs look like a new team. Yeah, but speed. He's still Ooh. speedy. Coming in with a 3k. Can he make it four? With the help of Mirman, he does. He finally will go down right in front of a med pack. But Mirman picks up another one. Now it's just Dongus, who's forward for his team as well as Demento, who does take down the uh, gun. Or not the gun. He takes down the dispenser. So he's right up by Spamfest. He doesn't know it. And he's going to drop down. He should get a frag. No, Carson gets so lucky just in time. But will get traded out here. But this is where Jarrett struggled last time when he holds down and lower. But that sentry gun up. Yeah, Banny. That's what happens when there's a gun up on a team. It makes it hard for you to push in. And so Banny not able to do any heroics thanks to Spamfest. But right now, Ubercharge in the advantage of Nursey. But Jarrett, a lot of damage down. He's got to be careful, though. He's completely separated out from his team. And Bulls isolating them off. Speed's going to go down. And this is actually looking pretty decent here for the Cowardly Dogs. Or is it? They're getting back up here. Yeah, they're gonna. They're looking pretty good right now. Yeah, the health is really bad on the side of Cat Noises, which means they're gonna either have to back off to spawn or uh, Daffodil's gonna have to put himself in some awkward positions to get those heals out. But they are up in tiles. That gun is still up. Fallen Lord, nice shot onto Banny. Uh, you know, impact player gone. Speedy's behind, Speedy's behind. Come on, can he do it? The Cow Mangler goes in, forces the Uber off. Nursey has died too many times to that to die again. So it's hard to get Nursey to force and Speedy has put the fear of God into her. Uh, the gun does go down. That's going to afford some space to the cart to get capped. Uh, cat noises, they're all falling. This could be the round. Three minutes left on the clock, so there's plenty of chances left, but they want to close it out here as Daffodil falls. They've here only man. got a couple here of respawns. Look at he can, he can get a push into the cart. Push! Everybody in! Everybody in! Oh, he gets oh! Oh, He pushes! Oh! Oh! Here comes that speedy over the top! So much damage, but Billy Source is still alive. Jerk just getting back up, but will be enough. There's so much damage, but oh, oh, oh! So <laughs> close! He had a chance. He had a chance, oh. but now 
We're going into Golden Cap in the reverse sweep. We said it's possible. It's there. You don't count Panny out. And they're clutching on to this game. Oh, I love that premiere, man. I love that so much. Oh, so close. Oh, my God. What a what a round there. And, I mean, honestly, the thing, though, is that, like, it was a great job coming out of the Cowardly Dogs just to maintain upper control and never let Cat Noises feel comfortable. And I think it's just that hyper-aggression is catching Cat Noises off guard. But we do have another person to hold an opinion with this. And uh, why don't you give us your just kind of first initial thoughts on uh, what happened that round? That air blast could have been so cool! <laughs> <laughs> so close! It was so close! If only, if only, man. But yeah, I think I think we saw why Cowardly Dogs had such a strong season you know throughout the regular season where andrew's playing well i mean i'd fallen definitely having us having a bit of a struggle in that half right there um andrew on the on the flip side really really going off and i mean they just have a strong team you know anyone that's played candy and highlander knows how strong their upward second holds can be so anytime i watch a team with you know some candy players on in this case you know nursey demento bowl billy I guess Billy an ex-candy player, but you, you have that potential to just really stall someone out on second because they really understand how to play that point. And we saw that happen right there. When you have a sniper putting in as much work as Andrew's doing and, you know, players that understand the map as well as wow. Nursey does, you know, it's it's a it's a match made in heaven. And I think at this point, they finally kind of snapped out of the funk that they got in. Again, you know, that that whole coal plant thing with the, with the sentry gun and the shutter really, I think, kind of threw them off a bit. And I, I don't, I don't, I, Fallen obviously I think is going to have a better half this time, but I don't necessarily see what cat noises can do in order to perform better unless they're able to really shut down Andrew. So I think we'll see a closer half in this one than either of the first two were. Um, I'm actually, I know I predicted 2-1 for cat noises, but I'm, I'm definitely leaning, I think, Cowardly Dog, if they take this momentum, they can easily run with this straight into Borneo. Mission begins in see if that's possible. Borneo is another, I mean, most maps are comfortable maps for snipers, but I just want to point out, Andrew, 9-1 to one in SVS. Sniper v. Sniper, that means when one sniper kills mm. another, 9v1, so that means Fallen only killed Andrew once, and Andrew killed Fallen nine times. I'm going to explain this like to five-year-olds apparently, but <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying. The the big thing though is so maybe Fallen just needs to play a little bit of a different play style. I mean, Fallen had 15 deaths, nine of those to Andrew. That's an insane figure. That's almost a thir two thirds of your deaths. So maybe he just needs to stop peeking for Andrew, just doing everything he can to avoid that sight line. But either way, here we go. Starting on offense, this is the golden cap. This is do or die for not both teams, but it is for the Cowardly Dogs as Benny's running in there early on. And I gotta say, I'm not loving the Mirror Man Pyro. I think it's doing, like, okay, but given how good Mirror Man has been doing on Soldier, I'm kind of hard-pressed to take him off of it, you know? Why not just get that extra damage? But um, they're holding stiff with it, and so we'll see what that can do as the Teleporter does go down uh, for Demento. Very passive Sentry Gun as well. Big pick out of Demento as well, taking down Carson, so no heavy here for the offense, or defense, that is. Yeah, and Demento already got the teleporter down too, which is huge. Decloaks behind Spamfest. There's the sap and there's the uh, the backstab too, now being chased back by Miraman, but this point is already gone. Even though Daffodil has 100%, there's just no way you hold this without a gun. Uh, I'm just kind of surprised that uh, that Cowardly Dogs haven't pushed sooner, and they do force the Uber out early, but they've lost Dongus and Billy Soros too, so I feel like if you push with your whole team there, you can just take down the remaining players, but instead they're just bleeding one by one. Nursey on Banny, uh, still a force to be reckoned with these two together, and I, I, they're gonna cap this point, but it could have been so much cleaner, and then you could have tried to catch them uh, when they were backing up to second, so it, it works all the same, but could have been optimized, I guess. Oh, oh. No, no, another backstep. I was just going to mention that Demento is currently top fragging in the server to start out the game. And yeah, he's going to pick up one more. I think just not having to play against Demento for so long is maybe got sense a, a little bit of a lull for Cat Noises where they're kind of like, okay, we don't have to worry about spy checking as much. And just like that, the uh, ultra aggression coming out of the Cowardly Dogs combined that with a spy play. That's how you need to play with the spy. It's actually more aggressive than if you didn't because that's how picks happen is when they get a little bit scared. And so Carson will pick up one inside of that uh, C, but it won't be a lot. Andrew, Jarrett jumping out alone. He's going to jump back, but can he get out alive? Oh, oh my God. What a headshot coming out of Andrew <laughs> right there. But Mirror Man in kind does get the force off. And so, I mean, that doesn't really mean much for this point, but it does mean that Catnoids, they do have a chance because that card is so far back. If they want to play this aggressively, 
they have a chance to go back into this point, but I, I think they might just give this up and go out to third. Yeah, they uh, smartly, Cowardly Dogs did put Dongus in on the retreat, trying to get something out of it, but uh, just too many players uh, over there to, to try to uh, get a huge... A uh, huge wipe, but actually recontesting right now. A couple of members of Cat Noises. Speedy went in. Spamfest finds. Uh, oh, that's Demento. Bowl goes down though. Fallen Lord gets the body shot. Trying his oh. best right now is Jarrett. Oh, wow, Fallen with another one. Mirror Man finds Andrew. They've held on to this, and uh, I credit to them. That's that's an awesome play out of Cat Noises to have the confidence to go back in when you are at such a disadvantage. Well, and that's how you need to punish uh, the cowardly dogs. Is as soon as they get a little bit too aggressive, you know, holding onto it, you can be able to do this. Here comes in Demento. He does have uh, the potential to decloak onto the cart to get that spy cap. His icicle did get taken out. Here comes in the soldier. It gets so much damage onto him of Dongus, but Jericho going down incredibly low. He should go out. Here comes up the Uber charge. It's going to be a return in kind from the blue side. Nursey saving Bull from going down low, but Demento's going to get his staff on the gun here in just a moment. There it goes. Jerry is going to do what he can, but Carson, as well with Speedy, they're picking up right down those Nursey, and will they be able to defend this card? Bull's still onto it. Carson's going to go down, and so despite getting some frags, the frags are going to go down better, but Demento, oh, the revolver kill gets the last one onto the medic, and there you go. Oh, what a play, and Bull, he's seeking for more. Bull picks up the engineer as well. Wow, what plays the aggression coming out of the Cowardly Dogs is just insane, and it's working out so well for them. It's it's like when they stop thinking over every decision and realize, hey guys, wait a second, we have some of the best players in TF2. Do you guys want to just go get frags? And, oh yeah, let's, let's do that thing. They've looked so good uh, since whatever adjustment that they made uh, between that round that they lost it has just been excellent. Uh, a couple of frags do go back in the favor of cat noises, but uh, nothing nothing to worry about just yet. Speedy jumping in gets another one uh, finding bowl, so that's going to send Cowardly Dogs uh, tail tucked back waiting for their uh, respawns, but still, this is uh, an okay time. Three and a half minutes through two points. You've just got to make sure that they don't uh, stop this momentum uh, going forward, Andrew finding a pick on the Fallen Lord, maybe that's the catalyst. Yeah, but Banny, the card is still not pushed up. Jarrett doing a good job holding that back, but 100% ready to go. They do have 15% uber advantage, you know they're not going to use it. Demento is getting himself into position, but Banny focusing on the card does get it down. The Simcon is still up, and here comes in Demento. He's going to get the sap onto the gun as uber charges get changed up. But Mirror Man doing a great job blasting Bull back, but he decides not to get him all the way off to the cliff as Mirror Man does win the 1v1 in that pyro exchange. But here comes in Speedy, gets the medic. Can he get more? Bull going down low with the help of Mirror Man, but no, Bull stepping up huge. Takes them both down as Demento is chasing down Daffodil, but Carson is still forward here. Should be able to defend the cart against Banny. But no, Daffodil's still low. Banny's still pushing the cart. He's still a lot of HP in Banny. He wins the fight, and he's pushing this still ever forward. And now Jared's going to get pushed off to the cliff. Yes, he will. And somehow they'll hold down onto this Donkus on the backside. Took down Daffodil. And that should have been a hold by Cat Noises. But the sheer just force of the cowardly dogs come in. Banny should have gone down there. This cart should never have been pushed up so well, and great job out of the Cowardly Dogs. Yeah, and really credit to the team play again there. Banny was in trouble. Demento came from behind, started revolvering, uh, if that's a verb, Carson down. So Carson had to turn around for a second, saw the spy was too far away, then went back to Banny, and there was just enough damage from the two. So really good pincer. Uh, onto onto that target. So Demento again finds two more. Uh, I, this this guy is a man possessed. He's he's just finding pick after pick for the cowardly dogs. As uh, Daffodil then goes down. Was that a drop? That was a drop. Great suicide coming in from Bull and Banny, but it was enough to take him down. Carson's still above. He's going to force off the overcharge from Nursey to save Dongus, but here comes in Jared back up. He's going to jump back up to be able to get something out of this. But here comes in Mirror Man. I, I think Beerman needs to go off a of pyro right now. It's just not doing anything for his team. I just, I really feel the need that he needs to be able to do something more from. I mean, even Fallen, maybe going spy over Sniper would be able to help him out. He's currently bottom fragging for his team. Spamfest now on a scout off of Engineer as they are getting the frags. They're doing what they can, but can they get control of that upper area? Nursey down so incredibly low. Mirman chasing him down. Will he be able to get the frag? No, he won't. Nursey is able to get out alive, but... Uh, yeah, I just feel like Cat Noises, they need to switch something up. They are, it's not a horrible time they defended so far, but they keep getting put on the back foot, and I think they need a little bit more stopping power. 
What's funny is as you called out Mirror Man 2, he got a couple of picks and uh, maybe maybe if that's what cat noises need, we, we need to talk about their players a little bit more and then all of a sudden they're gonna they're gonna turn it on. So right now I'm gonna will uh, let's say Speedy. He's gonna do something big. He finds Demento, which spy pick normally not great, but with the way Demento is playing, uh, that's gonna be pretty huge for them. Speedy with another finds Andrew. So maybe maybe there's uh, some meat to this theory that I just came up with. Yeah, it might Quick, be just talk about someone else. As Andrew does go, they went down to the uh, soldier, but he's already back up alive. Dong is jumping in. He's going to find Fallen. He's going to take out Banny. Very low on card as Bull. Inside of his, uh, the upper area, he's going to go down as well. So fight or 4v4 fight as Mirror Man's going to go onto Andrew. Gets the frag, and this is just frags left and right. Daffodil going down as well. Uh, that was to <laughs> Demento. God, just going so absolutely huge. Demento currently top pointing in the server. Uh, I mean, really, just like, Demento is such a hot and cold spot. Either he does nothing or he does everything. And right now, he has the team on his back. So with this, Jarrett getting reset back up with main with yeah. Daffodil inside of the lower area. Speedy controlling the upper area. They're seeing how they want to do this. Nursey, though, sizable advantage, though incredible. Speedy just turned around. Would it be able to get? Jarrett's going to chase down Nursey. Will they be able to get the fright before the Uber comes up? Nursey, 76%, but no, Jarrett's going to get traded out there, and they forced so many people for that. I don't know if it was worth it. And so with my partner gone here, Mirror Man's going to die onto the card. I think this is going to be it for Cowardly Dogs. Here comes in the last chance with Speedy, as well as Spam Fest. Super Charge can be used to save just a little bit more time. But with Daffodil going down, Jarrett's going to come back up, but no, great reflex coming out from Billy's Horse. They're not going to have a chance. 8 minutes and 57 seconds. Very respectable time uh, for Cat Noises, but I'm surprised it's that slow. Honestly, it just felt like the Cowardly Dogs were just swinging left and right. And I rejoined the land of the living. I got so hyped that I accidentally hit the mute on my microphone. So. Womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. Well, either way, uh, let's see if we got 50 seconds here. Elto, my man, what did you see in that round? If you're if you're here, uh, what did you see that just worked so well for the cowardly dogs, or went so poorly for cat noises? I, mean, I think I think everyone, you guys, chat knows that Demento's revolver was coming so well. For the cowardly dogs and i think a lot of the plays we saw out of them looked really good on paper but ultimately the amount i think it happened on almost it definitely happened on third and fourth where they capped the point rolled forward with no one on card managed to wipe or near wipe all of uh cat noises and then had to go back and push the card and give cat noises just enough time to spawn you know in highlander you can push seven people forward because you have those two remaining on cart but in Prolander, you push seven forward no one's left on card and I think a lot of those kind of glory plays that you saw Demento in particular getting, again, were almost lost in the fact that they they looked cool, but they didn't really get that much off of it. And that's why, you know, it felt like such a long time, because they'd go in and you get all these kills and you yell about it. And then, you know, you come back and say, oh, wait, well, they just respawn and they still have to push the point again. So we'll see if we can do any better cat noises. Oh my god, Mirror Man gets stood up trying to jump into the enemy team. Jarrett going down as well. Not essential picks because, of course, they're so close to spawn. Uh, but one thing I want to point out, I'm was i I'm going to eat crow because that first round, Mirror Man top fragged. I'm just going to point that out. Mirror Man and Pyro top fragged. So apparently I shouldn't tell him what to do uh, because <laughs> he did a good job there. But Demento, uh, he, he didn't have as many frags. He was only at 10. Uh, close to top fragging, um, but uh, obviously he had some essential picks, which is a little bit more important. But uh, here we go, walking out, uh, Daffodil holding his head low. Doesn't want to pop the super, but it will finally come off. Yeah, the Uber does go in. No Uber in return yet from Nursey. I don't know if this means that Cowardly Dogs are gonna gonna just try to hold this or they're gonna back off and, and use that Uber to escape. We do have Carson in on the flank. Banny's gonna spot him out. Nursey in a little bit of trouble. Doesn't really take damage, but just a lot of pressure. So Billy Source finds a couple and interestingly they do use the uber but they stay in no okay they're finally backing out here uh which i think is come on come on don't make me look like a fool what are they gonna oh, do no. mirror man jumping oh. in oh nursey gets disconnected but will she be able to get out surfing for her life how is she still alive? 8 hp finally speedy does get the final damage onto him but dog is jumping in he's gonna get cleaned out but wow he actually got nursey here and sorry daffodil down to about 50 hp or mirror man still in takes down bowl and wow, bull 21 second respawn. Wow, that is very bad. And so that's going to give a chance them for them to get set up on hill if they want to. This is where Cat Noise has really struggled, but with bull down for another 10 seconds, yeah, they can do this. But look at Demento, very sneaky spot right now. 
Yeah, that indecision from the cowardly dogs is it really came back to bite them. Demento? They were in and then they were out and they were in. Oh, Demento comes out. He doesn't get anything. Actually, no. With, with Banny, uh, Banny gets the the frag. That's a misspeak on my part. So good distraction play and again a good pinch uh, by that team. Banny finds one more mirror man. Uh, Mayor Man goes down, Speedy as well. So Bowl is their casualty. They could still potentially hold on to this, but uh, again, uh, you just, whatever it's gonna be, commit to it. You don't need that indecisiveness. And I think the, the choice here has to be back up. They've lost Banny and Billy. Demento gets one with the backstab, but uh, that's the point lost. Yeah, just, I mean, again, I think it was just kind of comes back to Bull being dead so consistently. He was dead at the start, and then they picked him up just before they did that push. I think Bull's aggression really helps lead the team forward, and um, those are some key picks. But Demento getting a nice pick onto Carson. Oh, another one, a butter knife onto Daffodil. Wow, this man is stepping up to the plate. And 100% Ubercharge in the favor of Nursi. But a defensive Ubercharge, we come into a second pause of the night here. But, I mean, what a situation to digest right now. Um... That is the best push coming out from Cat Noises through the first two points. Uh, but with Demento getting that pick, it, it, it's pretty good. But it's not going to set back Cat Noises like drastically, only by about 30 seconds, because it's unlikely that, you know, Nursey's going to use that uber aggressively. Yeah, I, it's it's solid. And I, what I think this means, too, for Cat Noises is you, you're down, you know, you're down that round. Actually, we're back into it and kind of a, a wishy-washy defense. This is momentum and this is confidence that could be building for them. The fact that they have taken their first two points, looked good doing it. Third, again, this is this is the bear. This is where these teams have really kind of uh, been shaky trying to get this push. So we'll, we might know just after this point who comes out on top of this map. And they're doing a great job putting everybody on Cartongus. is probably, no, he actually gets an arrow to keep himself alive as Carson pushed up at that side house. But Bull down again as Banny down incredibly low will go down. And so no Banny, or sorry, no Banny, no Bull, no Dongus. So it's both explosive classes and their DPS in that cart already up the second hill, they have, there's no way to contest it. They have no explosive classes and they're punishing them for it. Great job out of Cat Noises, getting onto the card and Speedy finally jumps off of it as the power runs straight forward at him. But Nursey's still holding onto that 100% death hill, climbing ever closer. Now Speedy back on the card, can Bull get him off? Now Mirror Man there as well. They're gonna scare them off, but here comes up the Uber Exchange. Yeah, the Uber used first just ever so slightly by the side of the Cowardly Dogs. Billy Source does everything he can to make sure that it can't move forward. And he's successful in doing so, and that cart is still sitting back. Uh, couldn't make it up to the third hill. Banny does go down. Good shot from Fallen Lord. Haven't called his name enough, I feel. Uh, so do want to see him get back into things. We, we mentioned him as a potential linchpin uh, for cat noises if they're, if they're going to take this map. And it looks like that's where the pause came in, and, and it's already uh, went through. Speedy gets on the cart, immediately taken down by Dongus, and that's the name of the game here. It's Focus, who's ever on the cart, and just milk time. And they're doing a good job of that so far. It's Spam Fest now getting on the cart. Here comes in Dongus, just like Clockwork. Gonna push him off the cliff, actually. And using that black box to keep himself alive, Speedy now onto the cart. He wants to chase the frag onto Dongus, but he's gonna just hold onto here. And Banny gets stood up, head gets taken off, and now Dongus needs to jump onto it. Here he goes, he gets the kill onto Speedy, but they both get traded out. Now Bull, Dongus, and Banny are down again, and this is where the push happened last time. And yep, the Cowardly Dogs, they see the writing on the wall. They're gonna back out here, and great job. And they didn't even have to use their Uber Charge, and so Daffodil's gonna have 100% ready to trade. Three minutes, 40 seconds left on the clock here, coming into this final point. Carson already walking forward. He's gonna walk into the Billy Saurus, and actually, he gets the force. He got oh. the force all alone. I I don't know why they felt the need to force. I the Nursey didn't even grab the pack, so it's not like she took damage off of it either. I, I mean, you're on grand finals point right now. You have three minutes to push last, and cat noises take this. So there's no room for error. Very scary from the Cowardly Dogs. They're going to have to come up huge to block this Uber that's going to be coming in in just a moment from cat noises. This is going to be tough. Mirror Man Speedy down for a few seconds, so that's going to give Nursey a chance to get ever so closer, but yeah, that's going to be a little bit tough. This, I think this Uber exchange is really going to come down. Can Billy, the pyro, deflect this Uber charge that's going to come in here, or are they going to have enough time? Cat Noises, they're taking plenty of time to figure out how they want to do this. Billy does spot them. They're coming up the backside stairs. Can they be able to do enough? It's just Jarrett. They don't have Carson in with us. Here comes in. Billy Source! Oh, 
Oh, the sticky trap comes out, kills two of them as they're coming up here. But Nursey, no, Billy goes down. Nursey's on the way, way back. But here comes in Dongus behind. Daphne doesn't see him. Now he does, going down to half HP. Can Demento get the frag? No, it's going to be Andrew with the headshot. And the Cowardly Dogs are going to try to hold on to this. Nursey up to 90%. But Carson's pushing up as Mirror Man's jumping up, gets the frag. Nursey down with 95%. Uber, only three players alive here for the defense. Two minutes left in the clock, and they're walking it forward. Oh my god, and here is Speedy on the cart. No one's contesting the jump on. I don't think they're gonna do it. This cart's gonna get capped and there's cat noises. They take it and they take the grand final. For the first time in the history of RGL, this is be not gonna be Banny's year apparently, but my goodness, cat noises played their absolute mind off. But wow, the Cowardly Dogs played so great. Both of these teams putting up such a great fight. This entire finals, you cannot take anything away from them. I think every player individually stepped up at times to show off how good they are and how much they deserve to be inside of this finals. What an absolutely amazing finals to cast. Yeah, I, I mean, it was just back and forth and back and forth. It, it's a 2-0. It did not feel like a 2-0. Not at all. It, it was, yeah, just really entertaining for from both sides and just, uh, I just, you know, very happy that I had a chance to be a part of it. Well, to be fair, it was a it was a two one in this map, so it was uh, right. Yeah, they won they won two maps, but that was they did not feel comfortable in that. And I think honestly, part of that just came down to the the final point. Obviously, just great play stepping up from Mirror Man coming up from. I mean, that was so clutch underneath. I, maybe if Nursey didn't pop that Uber charge, you know, but they defended that Uber pretty well. It was a post Uber fight that honestly they lost, um, you know. But honestly, I think it was that if they had a better second point hold, if Bull didn't go down early in that exchange and did get put onto the 22nd respawn wave. They might have had a chance, but Cat Noise is the longest running team in the history of RGL is going to come down with it. And this is pretty amazing too, just because they were like, when they started in this league, they were like consistently the third, fourth place team to see them kind of rise up each season, get better and better to now where they're winning the grand finals. Um, just just phenomenal. Um, but yeah, we can take a look at the logs. I'm see if we can get interviews. Uh from these guys i'll find out if they want to come in but uh just great job overall uh elto what did you see in that final round that allowed the cat noises to take it so when nursey when uh mirror man went upper i believe that was mirror man i told you at the end there um went upper and jumped nursey and killed her she had 95 percent uber and that soldier had a telly ring at his feet meaning that if that teleporter hadn't been there nursey gets uber and we might still be playing so out of all of the what ifs, you know, you can bring up here. I think that one is kind of the initial one that jumps out at me. Is you know, what if Spamfist isn't there? What if they don't have that telly? You know, maybe maybe Nursey gets that Uber, and who knows what happens. But yeah, I mean, just strong play out of Cat Noises again. I mean, we've been saying it all night, but Carson and whoever's been playing Soldier, it feels like really, whether or not it's been Mirror Man or Speedy, has been doing a fantastic job all night. I mean, we bring up the logs, and yeah, we see Mirror Man top fragging again on that, I guess, hybrid of. Uh, Pyro and Soldier. Dong is right behind him, so having a uh, having a good half of his own. Demento third fragging, I guess a lot of that momentum coming in from his offense on that third round, I guess not carrying over to the defense aspect of it. But, I mean, my heart does kind of go out to them, just because they had such a... Demento especially had such a fantastic last round there on the offense, and just they weren't able to pull it out. But, again, it feels like you know, you, you kind of... You said the phrase earlier, TF2's objective-based gameplay... And it feels like that was the main difference between these teams, not the DM, you know, not the not the class difference that really ended up kind of changing things. Just the fact that cat noises were consistently playing the objective, you know, any, every time they pushed third, they had someone on cart any time they Ubered in. So they so uh, cowardly dogs were split when cowardly dogs were pushing. They ran seven people up and yeah, they got a bunch of kills, but it comes down to, you know, winning, winning the points and getting that uh, card, card pushed up. And they just never did that, even on coal plant it felt like that gun that Spamfest had up in Shudder was really giving uh, Cat Noises, again, that ability to play forward on point, you know, denying uh, denying Cowboy Dark from getting on there. And I think that yeah. ended up being the main difference between the two teams. Yeah, it definitely feels that way. We got some interviews here, but real quick, guys, if you guys are interested in trying out Prolander, we have a cup coming up in a month, cup.rgl.gg. You can play for absolute free. We get, are giving away keys to half the teams. You just have to play half the teams when you get put into a division of your own skill level. If you are in the top four teams of your eight-team division, 
you win keys. It's that simple. If you want to try Prolander, that is one of the best ways to start it out. Uh, it doesn't matter how good you are. You don't have to be Banny in order to win keys. You don't have to be Banny in order to have fun at this. Or actually, I guess maybe I should be saying you don't have to be Mirror Man and <laughs> all these guys down beneath me as we'll be jumping down here. But cup.rgl.gg, check that out. And if you want to try Pugs, we do host Pugs uh, pretty consistently. It's going to be uh, Pugs, I'm sorry, rgl.gg slash Pugs. But uh, let's jump down here, everybody, and we can uh, do some quick interviews uh, with these guys. Teams. Hey, everybody, welcome out. Uh, congratulations, uh, everybody here uh, for for winning the the, the finals. Um, Daffodil, I mean, you've been in this league forever. Uh, you've been uh, somebody who's kind of been a, I want to say a believer, but you've been giving it an earnest go since the start. And how does it feel to kind of finally get that payoff after five seasons? Feels great, dude. Been waiting for it for quite a while. I can I can imagine. And I mean, a lot of these players are players that have been with you pretty consistently. Um, you know, and it's kind of interesting. You know, you got Spamfest. I know who's been mostly on your team, I think, for all season except for one. Um, and I recognize, I mean, all of them are familiar faces to me. Um, but, you know, let's talk about uh, real quick. I mean, let's jump over to Mirror Man. Um, you know, you had a great game today, obviously, on Soldier, especially during... Uh, coal plant you're going absolutely off what kind of changed from that first round to where you're able to like go off like pretty much every round after it felt like it was the mirror man show oh i just bombed where billy source wasn't like that's basically it's like just wherever billy's not yeah wherever billy was i just bombed elsewhere also andrew kept not playing with their combo so i got a lot of free sniper picks and got behind a lot for free yeah and, and speedy i mean you did work as well i mean pretty much in every round especially in that final one you're loving using that cow or cow mangler yeah. um just were you kind of playing this like very flank heavy soldier what kind of was your game plan uh for that upward match yeah i was just trying to flank and make space and i was having my team just call where everyone was so i could make plays when i was available to and vox my man do you got any questions for these guys well, I mean, obviously, you guys uh, came out on Cold Plant. You're you're ahead of the game. You come in then on the second map, go up 1-0. Obviously, spirits have got to be flying at that point, but uh, they kind of jabbed back at you, right? It, it wasn't as much of a done deal as it, it kind of looked like it was going to be. What was, you know, did you guys have to make any adjustments at that point, knowing that obviously a team like that can just come back at any moment? Or it, did it just come down to, well, you know, we could outplay them? I made sure to keep dropping Ubers. <laughs> that was a highly important part of our strategy. Yeah, I think that second round offense, we were like in a cycle of being out of sync, like together. So we were never, never able to actually like get solid pushes as quickly. So it just made our time like way too easy to beat, and that like helped us lose that second round. But we we yeah. adjusted. It seems like it. I mean, well, it seems like the the thing that kind of was with it is that. Um, I mean, just the hyper aggression that came out of the cowardly dogs so consistently. They were just like sending waves and waves at people at you, especially in that second and third round. Um, but in the third round, you guys were able to kind of stabilize. Uh, I guess kind of what what happened there? Um, maybe Daff or Jarrett, like you know, that you guys were able to stabilize kind of after their hyper aggressive pushes. We had to make sure we were all on the same page with where exactly we were. I think because I think there were probably some moments where. Um, like everyone knows what the plan is but when we're exactly we're enacting it is like slightly out of sync because people got to catch up physically to be in the spot to go so there are a couple times where like people are sitting maybe in a spot ready to do what their job is and then they get rushed by their aggression like you said and then it kind of like puts our respawn waves out of sync and we have to wait forever and that just kills time so i think we we did a better job of like making sure everyone was like ready and on the same page before we um like accidentally fed or anything like that in the third half makes sense we got uh of course got to give some love to my uh my engineer friend here spam fest uh you were doing i mean a, a great job very consistently getting some frags but especially on coal plant uh you know you're you got to be a little bit happy when the enemy soldier runs direct hit uh just to deal with you i mean i mean i've seen you do this before spam fest but like just how does it feel to know that you're making like that kind of impact on the game with that little uh, level three gun inside a shutter? Uh, it feels pretty good. I know, like, just by existing, I'm forcing them to like play spy, to play direct hit, stuff like that, and that like allows my team so much more space, even if I'm like not getting kills. So, 
pretty like happy whenever I manage to like do that. Yeah, it's it's a like a lovely thing to see. I just it's so much fun. Does this be like, oh, they can get onto the point? Nope, nope. There's a there's a level three gun. It's just it always warms my engineer heart. Uh, Carson, I don't think I've asked you a question yet here. You have been you were so consistently um, just dealing damage for your team. I mean, I don't know if there's anything really to ask because you're just kind of like I don't think you did like anything exceptional at times but you, you did have a couple of really good moments um in particular i think there was that one time on upward where you were down lower it was where jared and you ended up kind of just fragging out on the entire team um i mean kind of what was your kind of play style what was your kind of uh, decision going into like particularly on offense uh, on upward that you kind of uh because you seem to be going for a lot of flank plays it seems like yeah it's always just the stress to catch people off guard on heavy because it's just the easiest way to kill them like get three k's easily yeah, no, it's, I mean, especially if you can catch them off guard on heavy with that 450 uh, HP, but um, uh, Elto, any questions you want to toss at these guys? Uh, I want to, I, I <laughs> just want to ask how many times you think teams are going to keep letting you guys get away with getting coal plant with spam fest on your roster. <laughs> <laughs> Got some, uh, feels a little bit vindicating watching another team fall prey to the exact same thing that we lost to last season. <laughs> So, I actually, uh, I actually remember we were planning to pick coal plants as our first map, and then they picked it. And Sigafu was asking me, "Hey, where is your next map pick?" And I was like, "Well, I have to go consult my team because we didn't expect them to actually do that." So, I guess. Uh, uh, well, I guess actually, I do have a question. Uh, I want to throw it, I guess, to Mirrorman and Speedy because it was the two of you really playing soldier. You know what? You guys were consistently. Just finding picks, getting getting behind, you know, really, you know, coming up with those three Ks where it felt like every time we saw maybe Demento come in and get like two or three kills on his own, then maybe we see or Andrew, you know, get a couple headshots. We see one of you two bomb in with it being the cow mangler or you know, the stock and just kind of equalize that out. So was it, you know, was it a product of your guys' own, you know, coordination? Was it them kind of being caught off guard a little bit? I know. uh I think it was, was it Mirrorman saying that Andrew was on his own a lot? So was it things like that, or, you know, what was the, what was the deal? <laughs> In general, their flank played just by themselves a fair bit, and me and Speedy could just get buffs and run at them and get picks in situations where we frankly shouldn't get picks. And then a lot of the time, their combo just wouldn't necessarily be looking everywhere, and we would just be able to exploit the area they were not looking at and get onto them and get picks for free. Yeah, it's just coordination and knowing where their team is. If we know where they are, we can just make as many plays as we can, really. Well, it was a definitely a great job by both you guys, but I think uh, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, congratulations on your first ever championship after finishing uh, in second place last year. This was an incredibly tight game, and uh, honestly, just also just good on you, because it's like, I think, you know, when they took back the momentum in that second round, I think you guys did a great job uh, kind of working your way back into the golden cap, the golden round uh, of that third map. Um, but let's turn it out to, to some shout outs here. Uh, we'll go first for, through the players. Uh, Carson, any shout outs you want to give? Uh, shout out to Happy Bob. Happy Bob, the lovely man. Uh, Daff? Shout out to Second Wind and Delto. All right, uh, Fallen? Uh, shout out to Second Wind, Sovereign, uh, Andrew, Aeon, all the people who passed forward, and Dor. Garrett? Shout out to Daff for the mid-season pickup. I only really played half this season, but I'm glad I played the half I did. Yeah, it, was, uh, it, seems like I could, it seemed like you fit well with the team. Uh, Mirman? Uh, shout outs to Exile, Stinky Cheese. <laughs> Stamphus? Shout outs to June and Sailor Esports. Oh yeah, that's right, because you play over in the EU scene. Uh, yep. Speedy. Shout out to Boar and shout out to Ice. There you go. All the this is very concise shout outs. Usually people are like all about it, but you guys are like to the point. Maybe that's why you won, just that consistency. All right, let's give it out to the casters as we wrap it up here. Elta, who do you want to give a shout out to? Uh, I want to echo Daff's shout out to Delpo because that man taught me to fear like no one else has. Uh, shout out to Second Wind, um, and shout out to Jared for giving. Very thoughtful interview responses. Three weeks in a row now. Always, always there for us. Uh, Vox Day, my man, how you doing? Yeah, uh, big shout out to the teams. I mean, obviously, it was a really great match. Congratulations again uh, to you guys. And um, and thank you, Sigafu and Alto, for making me look good for the past couple of hours. And, of course, thank you, Dolphin. I have to give a little separate one. I, 
Don't I know dolphin. you're going to give him one, but I, I need to give him a little one, too. Yeah, Dolphin, got to gotta give him some love. But first, got to give a, a, a thanks to, like, all of uh, you guys. You guys have been in the league for uh, the longest time, getting us a, a lot of... Uh of uh time to be able to kind of suss out what we need to do and and i don't know just it's it's been fun really fun seeing you evolve, evolve and just thank you everybody who's given uh pro lander an earnest chance i know there's a lot of naysayers and people who um are just negative for the sake of being negative rather than just you know actually trying something out and, and actually forming a real opinion from it and so um i really appreciate you guys and just the, the game today it's exactly what i've always wanted out of a grand final it's just a really competitive close match of two fierce amazing teams um, and I really got to thank you guys um, for just putting up such a great fight, uh, you know, and, and I'll obviously got to thank the Cowardly Dogs. That's a, I, I'm not saying it, but that's what I'm trying to say is both these teams are just so freaking good. And everybody who played inside the league in our European league and uh, just everybody at RGL. Um, and then, of course, give a shout out uh, cup.rgl.gg. Um, maybe we'll see you guys in that. That's next month. Uh, in January uh, to play for some more keys if you guys want to do that. Um, and then finally, got to give it up for our boy Dolphin. He's been there every week. We're going to have a little bit of downtime finally, unless he cast the uh, ex <laughs> EXP Cup going on for Highlander, I think, this weekend. But it's going to be a little nice. Going to have a little bit of downtime for my boy Dolphin, unless you want to say words for yourself for the first time or you want to remain... They can't. He's he's blinking behind the scenes. Morse code help me, but trust me, it's okay. He's he's very happy here. <laughs> that close to a voice reveal. Damn. It's it's so close, so close. Well, thank you so much, guys. Give us some love out to Dolphin. He's been so consistent with us throughout all season, and and does you know he always gets praised inside the comments, and it does mean a lot. If you guys like his camera work, uh, or if you don't like it, I mean, just any sort of real criticism or real praise uh, does help us out and understand what we can do better or know what we're doing well. So it really is appreciated and makes him feel loved for what he does so thank you so much for that so thank you everybody for joining us out here tonight it's been amazing i hope you've had a great time uh, great viewership and i think with that we will see you next time